Hey Aussie Gamers and welcome to episode 49 of the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, the podcast that simply walks into Mordor. I am your host Luke One and joining me as usual is my good friend Thorncliffe. How are you mate? I am fantastic. We're also joined uh, this evening by my other good friend Red. How are you? Good, thanks mate. Wonderful. And last but not least, the video game encyclopedia himself, Reprimere. Hey guys. How are you mate? I'm alright. Welcome to the show. So, let's set the, the tone for the show. It's not going to be a usual Aussie Gamers Express episode this week. It's going to be a, a special for the EB Games Expo of 2014, where we're just going to talk constantly at you about video games that we played there on the weekend and our experiences and ups and downs. So, alright, well, I guess without further ado, let's step into... Do you want to talk about Sunset Overdrive first up? Uh, yes. Alright. Now, Red, actually first before we kick off into that, Red, you weren't at the expo, so you're going to be just sort of hitting us up with questions, whatever curiosities that you've got. Yep. Sean, Jason and I feed those questions and talk um, about them. Now, first of all, I want to say that uh, Sunset Overdrive... Before and I mentioned this on the on the Facebook page before going to the expo, Sunset Overdrive and the Master Chief Collection were two games that I was of the opinion that were going to force me to buy an Xbox One. That was what my driving force was. I did get to play Sunset Overdrive. It was playable at the expo, and we also did have a conference with Marcus Smith from Sunset Overdrive. So what I'll do before we go further into that. I'll just play that interview that we had, uh, or that, uh, sorry, that conference that we had with Marcus Smith. Can you tell us what to expect from the multiplayer? Yes. So we have this very, very truncated version on the floor. Uh, it's called Chaos Squad. It's eight-player co-op. Um, it's a big enough team that you don't feel like a loser when you get in, as like some team-based games where you're just like, if you're bad, don't tell you. Um, there's... Uh, so the premise of it is that you all play together, you're in the open world, so unlike here where it's just the night defense portion of it, uh, it's you play in the open world, you have different objectives that, that come up, so you, you may have to go like collect a bunch of stuff and, and there's there's this competitive element, so you know we have leaderboards at the end, so you have to have bragging rights. Um, and then you're offered up a couple more objectives that come up and you guys have to vote. And that, there's a strategic element there because depending on what objective it is, the night defense at the end is going to be either super hard, but with a bigger chance of reward, or much easier to succeed in with a lesser chance of reward. So there's this balance you have to strike in how hard you want that end night defense to be. But you play several objectives, you vote about uh, vote over them in between, and then you do a big night defense. And uh, like the demo, it's chaotic. It lives up to its name, Chaos Squad. Uh, but it's, it's super fun. Also, it's super fun. <laughs> Yeah, so apparently the game is super fun. <laughs> I think he uh, he got that point ahead. But yeah, he says it lives up to its name of uh, Chaos Squad. And after playing it myself, I tend to agree. It needs to be like Chaos Squad to the power of 9 million. Because that's what that game is. Uh, I think it should be changed to Clusterfuck <laughs> for, the, uh, for that multiplayer mode. Did you play the actual multiplayer mode, or was it campaign mode? No, it was multiplayer. That's no. it. that's all they had. Ah, cool. Was the uh, yeah the multiplayer that chaos or whatever it is? I don't look. This was a, an issue. They they did offer an explanation for it, but when I played the multiplayer, it might have been in the afternoon or whatever it was. The frame rate to the to, they were playing on Xbox Ones, presumably the frame rate was garbage. Is it you had the same experience, didn't you, Sean? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was about 15 frames per second. Yeah, now it seemed to be really struggling. There was a lot going on on screen because it is a Chaos-style multiplayer where I would ex describe it as a kind of... What type of games are there? Like a... you got to protect your base. There's like horde... horde mode. It's like a horde mode and you need to... It's not just go and kill everything. It's also protect your, your home base sort of thing. The... Zombie things, or whatever you want to call them, I think they're called the ODs. They're the people that have drank this new uh, 
Fisco. Energy, yeah, Fis- Fisco's the, the company, I think. Yeah, the energy <clears throat> drink's called Fisco, I think. No, no, the, the company that makes the energy drink is Fisco. Ah, okay. I can't remember the name of the energy drink, but anyway, this energy drink, it, it, they've basically bypassed all safety standards and they've uh, put out this Fisco, have put out this new drink and it turns people into these crazy zombies. Your character doesn't drink it, blah, 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 so and so on and so forth. So these uh, ODs are coming towards the, the, the home base, which you've got to protect in the multiplayer game, which is a, like a Bowser of this drink that they just can't <laughs> seem to get enough of. So they're trying to get in to get that. You're trying to stop them because it'll make them evolve even further, I would imagine. But anyway, yeah, it's just there's that much on screen. You set up all these traps that'll kill them, you throw bombs, shoot, jump up, you uh, grind on uh, power lines and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot going on. I think there was eight players as well. Mm. Yeah, so it was eight player sort of cooperative multiplayer. And, yeah, the frame rate just slowed down massively. We did have a chat with uh, some of the people in the expo saying that because of the way that everything's designed, the consoles constantly overheat which makes them power down and so they don't overheat, which gives bad performance. Whether or not that's true or the game was in an early development, it's not finished yet or something like that, but either way, it was really bad experience for me. I wasn't really totally impressed with it. No, I was very unimpressed, actually. Um, it was something that when I looked at it when he was explaining it during the little conferencing we had with him, it was... It just sounded like this amazing multiplayer game to to be playing, but yeah, with everything going on on the screen, and you just didn't know where to to shoot, where to just do anything. You know, it was all it was was fighting back these three waves of zombies, stopping them from getting into your base, and it's was like they were trying to do too much in it, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, do you think back to what my what I was saying about PlayStation All-Stars, Battle Royale, yeah. whereas at the end of the, the level, I would be thinking, all right, well, tell me, did I win? How did I go? That was the same thing, um, where at the, the end of the round, I, I didn't know if I'd won or I'd lost or I come first or I come last or whatever. Turns out but that I, I'd... But I, I did inform you that I did beat you. No, that's incorrect. Uh, no, I, actually, I actually beat you. No, Sean. it isn't. No. Well, ha- have you got any proof? <laughs> Sean, the master of clusterfucking. <laughs> yes. Yes. For the record, I won. Yeah. I came first out of the entire eight people that were playing. Yeah, yeah. I, I came right. ninth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, yeah, I, can, I can type with my nose on the keyboard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think I came fourth and you were third fourth, or something yeah i came third yeah i was dead dead halfway that's just story of my life <laughs> mediocre <laughs> uh, so what uh, was it that he was actually saying it was tony hawks meets what was, was the say, other game oh, that he jet, was set ra- jet set radio yeah oh yeah yeah with but, a bit of plants versus zombies yeah, well, yeah, actually, yeah, just no, no lawnmowers. Well, actually, essentially, there are kind of like lawnmower uh, offensive tools that you can use. But take away the performance, which I was mainly disappointed with, the game as well sort of wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I was kind of expecting a little bit more like Infamous. Yeah. And not, not, not uh, Second Son, more like Infamous 2. That's kind of what it came across as through the videos that I'd seen. But it wasn't. It was a, It's a little bit too much going on. It's kind of just mash the buttons and hope for the best. The story might be a completely different thing where, you know, it may be a little bit more enjoyable. But from that experience, it kind of turned me off a little bit and it halved my reason to get an Xbox One, which, you know, leaves only the Master Chief, Master Chief collection, Master Chef. <laughs> now, just uh, lastly on it, he um, spoke to me at a little conference about a certain weapon which we got to use in the the multiplayer, which was a the teddy bear. Uh, the teddy bear. 
Yeah. Was it T and Teddy? T and Teddy. I've got to say, Teddy it's called. Yeah. T and Teddy is a really cool name, and it's a really cool concept as well. Yeah. So they said that when uh, they were designing the weapons, he got a piece of paper uh, sent to him, which had a picture of a teddy bear, a plus sign, and a stick of dynamite. So <laughs> the whole idea behind <laughs> T and Teddy is that it is a a teddy bear with dynamite strapped to its body. You throw it out, he jumps around and on the, the ground and, and runs around, but they've actually put little cool animations to it as well where he, he's there like yelling and trying to rip the dynamite off his chest before he blows up. So <laughs> Yeah, that that's all yeah. well and good. That's that's cool. The concept behind it all is fine. But you're never gonna see that. There's that no. much going on in the game. That's a waste of effort, I think. Yeah. Well, as we said, what we were doing in that multiplayer was a massive clusterfuck, and hopefully you'd be able to get some kind of um, grasp on it when you were playing the single player. You know. And now, what I'll do, with all of the interviews and recordings that we play during this show, I'm going to put them together in their entirety into kind of like an episode 48 A, if you will. There'll be two episodes that come out, one after the other, and that will have just the entirety of the the interviews uh, without any editing in them, so you can listen to them if you're keen. But there was one thing I wanted to point out as well. Did you notice that he had a bit of a dig at Watch Dogs? Oh, I was just about to – yeah. Uh, Sorry, Red, what were you going to say? That was the conclusion I drew from what he said in the when he was answering the question. It was open world with things to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's not – the part that I'm thinking of, but there's a section in where he's talking about the player and the customizable player for multiplayer and how you're uh, you're yes. separate from the main campaign. You are you make your own character. There's not a million different things to pick to customize your character, but you can you, you will have your own identity. So there's not a million. He did say Nathan Drake's running around in the world, but what I felt that that was a, a bit of a dig at was. Uh, was Watch Dogs, how every single person who plays is the main character. A fat Latino, who is your mate. But yeah, well, <laughs> but but you appear differently to everyone else. I thought that might have been a dig. I don't know, maybe I'm just looking into it too much. But anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. But uh, yeah, look, uh, Red, Jason, you didn't play it either. Have you, you two, either you guys have any questions about it that you're wondering about Sunset Overdrive? I got one uh, for a you... personal one for you after repping me. Go, Jason. Uh, no, nah, I've got no questions. You've pretty much covered everything that I've wanted to ask. Cool. What's your question, Red? Like, if you went into the eBay Expo and you're making a decision on whether to buy a limited edition Xbox, did what they show you at the Expo turn you off from buying the Sunset Overdrive edition? Yes. Uh, look, the, the is the Sunset Overdrive on the white one? Uh, I believe so, with a bit of yellow and whatnot on it, I think. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have bought it anyway because I don't want a white one. I don't want yeah. to like a Super Nintendo in a few years. Yeah, copy that. But, like, in what way? What do you mean, like, the because of the game or because of the bundle? or? Well, because of the bundle primarily because you said that that and Master Chief were your main selling points when it came to wanting an Xbox One. yeah. If you, if you went in with the thought, colour regardless, like, I'm going to get it with Sunset Overdrive, now are you more likely to go get a different bundle after your experiences? No, nah, look, I wouldn't avoid the game like The Plague because, look, it probably will still be a very good game. It just wasn't what I was expecting. So by any means, I, I'm definitely not saying that it was shit. I'm just saying mostly that my experience with it at the Expo was shit. Whether it be, and I think it's probably a likely scenario because some of those rooms that we went into, like they're makeshift rooms. Picture an ex of the expo being a massive exhibition hall, which is completely open plan, and they build these like balsa, not balsa wood, but these like um, plywood yeah. boxes around the joint so they can section it off and then chuck eight to ten consoles inside with these enclosed walls. They probably are hot, and and poor things are probably cooking. And with the new technology, oh. they probably do go into a, a safe low power mode so they don't overheat. Sorry, Jason, were you going to yeah. say something? Yeah, um, 
with one of the uh, things I went into, I think it was the Mortal Kombat one. I like I did touch after talking after hearing the person talk about how they were overheating stuff. I did touch the enclosure where the um, console was. I'm not sure what console it was, but I touched it and it did feel warm on the outside as well. So there is definitely a lot of heat going on in there. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's what it is. It's the consoles, so they don't red ring like they did once upon a time. They probably cut half the power, so you've only got half your CPU working, half your GPU working. I'm only speculating. I don't know exactly how they work, but I would think that they would probably have something like that to stop them malfunctioning, which probably would give you a poor frame rate. Mm. So, I mean, like I said, my experience was terrible. That doesn't necessarily mean the game's going to be bad, but that multiplayer wasn't overly fun like me personally red when i play multiplayer games with you all the co-op style things i like a little bit of control where we can discuss okay let's go this way you go over there in this game there's not really any chance for that it's just boom mash the button three two go (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, exactly all right well i think we spent enough time on sunset overdrive let's uh let's move on to something else all right so next up we'll uh we'll discuss Drive Club, we got to uh, get a bit hands-on with that. But uh, more importantly, we managed to, uh, Sean, you and I, we uh, were involved in a conference with Simon Barlow. He's one of the developers for Drive Club. And uh, you and I managed to ask him a couple of questions personally, and he answered them. So what we'll do, we'll have a listen to those questions. Then we'll have a chat about them. We'll have a chat in between each question. Yep, we'll do that. All right, here's the first question by myself, yours truly. I played a playable demo of, uh, of Drive Club last year. Can you tell us what changed since then? Uh, yeah, lots. <laughs> we, um, so the, the reason why we delayed the game was uh, down to what we termed the dynamic menu. And that's basically, it, it's, I guess it's the user interface, that's how kind of people will perceive it, but it's so much more than that. Um, the game has a uh, real-time social network that sits underneath everything. Uh, we have three different server architectures, we have a companion app. Everything is connected 24-7. Um, and that was the, the, the real thing that we found, a challenge to kind of to, to get absolutely right. It was a pretty ambitious goal. Um, and last year what we had was, like it was a good game last year, we, we could have released it. Um, we feel like it probably would have done okay, but it wasn't quite right for us. Um, so most of the time has been spent really refining that user experience, uh, making sure that all the different uh, the different kind of gameplay components uh, all interact properly together. They all mesh together in a seamless way. But also that didn't obviously affect the entire team. We had pretty much the whole art team with an extra year's worth of development. Um, so we kind of looked at what we had with the engine, what we could uh, enhance and expand with the game. Um, one of the main things that we we decided to, to introduce this year was a weather system for weather update. Um, and this is this is only really possible because the engine we built was was built for the lifespan of PlayStation 4. Um, it wasn't built specifically for PS uh, for, for Drive Club. It was specifically built for PS4 with some additions that we made to, to suit Drive Club. So it was always planned to be a, an engine that would last us eight, nine, ten years. Um, and we we'd always had kind of a roadmap for what we wanted to add to it. And the, the, the kind of the next big thing on it was weather. It just so happens that after we announced last year, that was the one feature the community wanted to see. They were like, can we can we have rain? Can we have snow? So we went back to the art team, the render team, we looked at what was possible with the engine, we looked at how we could deliver a weather update for Drive Club, um, and that's really what we've been working on. Uh, it's not quite finished just yet, uh, we're hoping to get it out before the end of the year, it will be a free update for everybody. Um, but actually, as, a, as Beck said, there's a, there's a presentation um, tomorrow afternoon, and I'll be showing off some, some live gameplay of the weather feature there, just to give you guys an idea of what, what we have improved since, since last year. That, that was quite interesting. The the first part of what he was explaining after I asked that question is basically he said to us, this is my sort of interpretation of what he says, we delayed the game last year because the servers weren't working. <laughs> and now, by the time you've listened to everyone's listening to this, you'll know that Drive Club was delayed from being released on the 8th for PlayStation Plus because the servers aren't working. What, what's going on? What's going on in, in Drive Club world? Um, I'm just reading a thing now from Drive Club 
on Facebook. Yeah. And they said, um, in case you don't know already know, the server servers are up and running, but they are hitting their performance limits, so they won't accept new collect- connections until one of the current players um, frees up their space. So they've hit a um, player limit on the servers. Holy shit. I've never heard of a player limit on a server. That must be some cheap-ass servers they're using. Mm. So, yeah, like, and um, people who are trying to connect, if somebody does free up a place, it's randomly um, selected from the people who are trying to connect. Oh, no, who gets in. So did they even, did they do a beta? Um, I'm pretty sure they didn't. I think they skipped that. See, that's... Uh, this is at, why we beta test people. That's exactly right. Like, you I mean, have a look at uh, Destiny. I, every single person on my friends list was playing Destiny. Yeah. When that first came out for a good week or two. Like, I dare say that that was probably very consistent across most people's friend list, that that was the game of the week or two. And I, I never had any issues. I think I made a disconnected once Yeah. In, in the time that I've played it, which is fairly impressive. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. They still haven't uh, managed to get that right. But, look, in the meantime, like you said, um, the the servers, didn't they weren't working right because it's an always online game, blah, blah, blah. They wanted to sort out a couple other things. In the meantime, they also had time to make the game look prettier and they're adding the weather feature, which isn't finished yet either. Oh, the weather feature looks really good, though. It's a, it is a, it, I think it's going to be a great game. It's probably going to be worth the wait, but geez, it's frustrating. Like mm. constant delay yeah. after delay. Yeah, they um they said that the PS Plus de- edition is delayed, so that way the people who bought the um the physical copy and stuff, who actually play paid the full price for the game and that sort of stuff, were able to get in if somebody does free up a space. Mm. Yeah, <sighs> that that'd be a horrible experience. You, you can't yeah. sit there and you can't put another game on while you're waiting for it to bloody load. We're yeah. just going to leave your PS4 on till you might get a spot. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not not to be a Debbie Downer here at all, but but you, re- I, I will say, you really opened the floodgate with that question, Luke. Was that the first question of the day? I, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, it went, was. It was yeah. scripted. He just went, bah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <That's> <laughs> There's apparent talk that they may have it fixed by the end of tomorrow, but... Um... By the looks of it, it's not going to be. It's going to be delayed for the next couple of days. Oh, don't rush, guys. I've got Mordor in isolation to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. Uh, well, Just on um, that yep. question as well. The the whole idea behind this uh, a live social network for the game as well. So uh, online leaderboards and like playing against your your friends. It's always a good good thing to have that kind of stuff in a game like this because i love the fact that i can now post my times up against you guys and and be like race shoes in an actual race but also whilst i'm playing by myself i can always be updating getting better scores yeah and, yeah. and you doing can it be like that, so super competitive even though you're not playing at the same time as your mates yeah like mm. uh that's what trials was for me right yeah. Yeah. That was cool. All right, we'll move on to your question, Sean. Every game that's coming out at the moment seems to have DLC tapped to it. Um, what's the plans for for Drive Club in regards to that? Um, they're fairly ambitious, I think. What we so you know, as a gamer, um, I look at DLC and I, I like the fact that um, the DLC kind of extends the content for me. If I, if I enjoy a game, I like the fact that there's DLC. There's more for me to play. But I feel a lot of the time with developers, they, they produce DLC that, like, I feel like I'm just getting what I'm expecting, right? It's, it's, you know, it's another level or it's another expansion to it, but I'm kind of getting the same thing. I wanted to break that cycle with Drive Club. I didn't want us to have that traditional DLC approach. What I wanted to do was, um, was kind of open up a dialogue with the community um, and try and get beyond just traditional DLC and actually start with... Well, what is it that the community want? Can we, can we, you know, this is a, this is a social connected experience. We're hoping to have a fairly broad community, and I want to work with the community themselves to try and help define what Drive Club is in the future. So, part of that is us being transparent about what we're producing for the game. We've announced our twelve month DLC strategy, for, you know, for the, for the next year, um, and it, it includes like a mixture of free and paid for content. 
and we feel it's it's right to offer the people that have just paid for the game at, at launch to pay for the either retail or digital download to offer them compelling free content as they you know throughout the life cycle of the product and um, the paid for content will be the kind of the optional things the things aren't essential to the gameplay so maybe more cars for example will be a good example that like you may not like those cars you may not be into those cars you don't have to pay for them um, but all the free content, so things like the weather update, uh, we're working on photo mode as well, um, which is going to launch before the end of the year. That's going to be free. New tracks are going to be free. We're going to do a new location as well, which I can't tell you anything about at the moment, unfortunately. But, you know, there will be a new location launch next year. That's going to be free as well. And we're also going to do free car drops every month. So what we're hoping to do is, you know, we've got a vision for where we want the game to, to go in the next 12 months. Um, we're hoping there's a great mix of content that people can get behind. If they want to spend money, they can, but you know, you can totally play Drive Club without, like I said before, without spending a single cent. But we have left uh, some gaps, if you like, in that schedule, um, some, some kind of free development time, because we want to work with the community and try and find out what it is that they want us to produce for the game. Like, how do they want to see the game grow? And if we've got the time and the resources to support that, we'll help to kind of grow that game with those people. There you go. So. DLC. What do you guys think about DLC in Drive Club? I, I, I just really think he shares the same sort of views as we do. Like, it's there if you want it and if you enjoy it, but it's not game-breaking if you don't have it. Yeah. Exactly. And I was I was really impressed with his answer when he, he gave it. Um, yeah. He, as you just said, Red, he, he's a gamer himself. He knows what what is good about DLC, but also what's bad about it. So they're trying to um, market the DLC. So, you know, like everybody's not going to go out and buy the full version of this game. There's going to be free car drops every month. So you get like a, a mix up of the, the cars that you'll, you'll be able to drive in the game. Um, there'll be the, the weather update, which is going to be free as well. But then if I want more tracks, if I want, extra things in the game then you know what I'll, I've got the choice there whether or not I want to buy them and mm. that's good and I can near guarantee one of uh, one of you guys or one of or myself we buy a track or a pack of tracks I'll say to be the others are probably likely going to do it as well because we're going to want to beat the times but if they can keep that at to a price that's not like 15 16 bucks like the the pinball machines if it's yep. affordable, then we, we probably will be picking up here here and there. So the PS Plus version will probably end up yielding some profit anyway. Like, I, I would appreciate it if it was like, let's just say for an example, two tracks, two cars, five bucks. Yep. yep. Yeah, I'd do it. Or even if it was a, a track and a car and, and it was, you know, a couple of bucks or whatever, you're going to get heaps of people getting them and then have like, you know, your $15, boom, get all of the extra stuff for this season. Yeah, uh, so, and I, I I like the idea of additional cars and, and tracks and things like that. It's when developers start delving into different game modes. Like, say it was a time attack, but you had to you had to get the time trial version. You had to buy it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not for that. Buy mode. Yeah. Mm. Need for speed. <laughs> Did that have that? Yeah, something similar like that. We could. Well, you could you had to buy a certain car to be able to access the fucking the uh, event sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's it starts to take away your choice. It's like like those Foxtel packs, you know. You you want you want this one, but you have to buy every other single channel to get that one. I hate it yeah. when they do that with DLC. You know, I don't really want all that other crap. I just want this. If they break it up into a smaller chunk, so I'd, I'd be pretty happy with that. The extinction maps on Call of Duty. That's another one. Move on to the next question for Simon Barlow. Yep. This yeah, is mate. the final question that I believe I asked. So have a listen to this one. Are the tracks uh, real world tracks and are there any Aussie tracks? <laughs> um, they're, they're kind of a, a mix, really. They're, all of the tracks are kind of bespoke, designed in house, but they are based on real world locations. So, like all, all five of the locations, we have Canada. Uh, Scotland, uh, Norway, Chile, uh, and India. That's our five sort of locations that launched with the game. We visited every single one of those locations. Um, and one of the decisions we made when we were looking at like, where we were going to set Drive Club was, can we, can we take it to places that, that you wouldn't traditionally find in a game, specifically a racing game? 
Um, and look, Chile and India in particular, like we've not seen these in games before, right? These are completely different locations to, to what people are used to. Um, and that was a big thing for us. And Drive Club is about, you know, the, the kind of the emotional connection people have with racing. It's about taking your dream cars and, and, and driving them on the world's most, you know, incredible roads. Um, it, 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 having that connection, these environments, these locations had to be inspiring. They had to be really kind of immersive and really different. So, as I said, you know, we went to each of those locations, we took elements of them. So we may take uh, a particular section of road that was, that was really cool, or we may just take a particular, um, not even the road, but the off track. So like either, you know, a particular mountain or facility or something that looked really cool, uh, incorporate that into the game. But then use a bit of artistic license really to kind of stitch everything together because you know what you find is if you were to just take like the Google Maps data for example and just make a race out of that, it would be the most boring race in the world. Like roads are not designed for racing on, they're designed for driving on in at very sensible speeds. Um, you know, you can't race on them, so you have to adapt. And we like we've been making racing games now for over 15 years, so we we, we think we know a thing or two about like track design and course design. So we took the real world locations and adapted them and just made them flow a little bit better and, and turned them into racetracks. Um, that being said, you know, some of the locations in the game, they're, they're, they're so close to reality. Um, we've actually had, I mean, I personally I was in E3 uh, earlier in the year. And I was talking to a bunch of journalists from Chile and we had the Chile track on the game and I was kind of talking to them and they were, they were absolutely blown away by the representation of Chile in the game. And one of the guys said to me, well, look, like, I live there, that's where I live. Like, you know, you totally captured that. Um, and that's great, you know, that it means we've done our job well, you know, they can actually identify parts of the game that look like their home, I think we've done a, a good job. As for Aussie tracks, there's none in the game at launch, um, whether we, uh, like I said, I can't talk really about what we're going to do in the future, we have one location plan that we've already looked at, we've already done some reference for, um, what we do in the future it really depends how the game grows, and like I said before, while we're working with the community, if there's a particular push for us to incorporate you know, different locations, different areas, and it feels a viable thing for us to do, then of course we'll look at it. You know, we'll never say no to something. Right, well, after the, he answered that question, I walked out. Fail! <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't really, but I gave him the opportunity for him to say, yes, we've got Australian tracks coming and we'll have Bathurst. But uh, that didn't happen. So... <laughs> No Aussie tracks. I don't know. I'd, maybe that's what's coming that he couldn't tell us about, but probably not. For the small price of forty nine ninety five. He, <laughs> he said that he wants the, the to have tracks in there that people wouldn't normally expect from uh, from a racing game. So I don't know. Maybe it's going to be Philippines, <laughs> Iceland, <laughs> Madagascar. Madagascar, yeah, Madagascar <laughs> tracks. Might be Tasmania. <laughs> Do you guys have a racetrack? And I'm not talking Simmons about a go -kart. Plains. Hey? Yeah. Simmons Plains. What's it called? Simmons Plains. Simmons, Simmons Plains, yeah. All oh, right. I'll have to look. They have a V8 supercar race there. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. of the biggest hairpins in the V8s. <laughs> what, the edge of the island or whatever it is? Yeah, the, the map. <laughs> <laughs> it's geographically located. Yeah, it just next goes. 100 foot cliff. Yeah. Mm. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the yeah. rocky conspiracy. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, it's going to have maps from five different locations, or tracks, I should say, from five different locations, and one will be has is yet to be announced. What do you guys speculate that that unannounced one's going to be? Well, I was uh, I put the idea out there of what I'd like to see if it was Australian, because like Bathurst is uh, just been done by. Gran Turismo 6, mm. and I'm guessing that they'll they'll vamp that up a bit for GT7 when when that finally gets released in 30 years probably. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> I'd like to see a cannonball run. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I remember you said that. A cannonball run from Darwin down to uh, Adelaide, and it had we well, shorten it a fair bit anyway. But you know, like going um, out through. Uh, Darwin and and through the city there, and then uh, down into Alice Springs and flogging it through there, and then into the foothills of Adelaide and into the city. You know, that, I, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. I think so. Look, mm. uh, like back in the day with Project Gotham, how it had the the racetrack through Sydney. Ah, uh, yes, that was cool. Something like that again. Something that we can 
uh, that, relate that to. Aussies can relate to. Yeah, because I mean, uh, in talking with uh, and listening to the Chomp on This Gaming podcast, Zach Knuckles, the the host, he's from Pittsburgh, which was represented in The Last of Us. And he had that whole thing like, oh, yeah, you look, I know that area, kind of looks, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'd like that um, eventually one day for somebody to make something that resembles my backyard. That would be quite yeah. nice. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it, and then you've got the people that are in watch, Watchdogs. They've got Chicago and yeah. Seattle for um, Infamous oh, Second Son. Infamous. Yeah. It's it's cool, and I'd love to see something set in Sydney because I reckon Sydney is a beautiful city with a big harbour and all that. I, I think it'll look awesome. Well, how cool would it be, like a mad Grand Theft Auto driving over the Harbour Bridge? Yeah, and or then, getting, uh, stealing a boat from, like, the Opera House. Yeah. Or robbing, <laughs> robbing the casino and onto a boat. Or, know? no, this is what I would love to do. <laughs> Almost went somewhere that you would have had to have edited out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At Darling Harbour or, um, where did I go the other day? Where did we go the other day, Circular Jason? Key. Circular Key. At Circular yeah. Key, walking up to those dudes that are painted gold and beat the living piss out of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the, or the koala with the bucket. What the fuck is Circular Quay? <laughs> circular Quay. It's from the big uh, smoke in the mainland. <laughs> anyway, that's that's Drive Club. Maybe one day we'll eventually have a go, but uh, not yet. All right, anything else to ask, say, do, whatever about Drive Club, or should we? Oh, um, we touched on it really quickly. Just yep. Um, referring back to that, the question posted about the tracks, <clears throat> they're not licensed tracks, obviously that being probably the operative word with the sponsorship and everything like that. But I really think that not so much levels the playing field, but opens up new experience for dry, diehard car racing fans that have done the Gran Turismo's and your Bathur and your V8 supercars and whatnot and Forza mm-hmm. and new players like me. I'm a real casual bloody racing car game player. I'll post a couple of times with this on Drive Club and whatnot and have a bit of a go, but I won't be hitting it up every single day. And I think that's really unique and I think that's really cool that they're going to be unique courses to this this game. Yeah, rather than all the same tracks that everybody's smashed yeah. out for the last Monza, 10 years. Laguna Seca. Yeah. You know, we all the know... Burger Ring. Nuremberg Ring, yeah. <laughs> the <yeah>. Nerd Burger. <laughs> yeah, the Nerd Burger Ring. <laughs> you know, we all know those tracks, whether we're casual or hardcore racing gamers, we know them all. Yeah. Well, that so was it. The first time I picked up Gran Turismo 6 and put it in, I went straight to Bathurst yeah. and vlogged it around that track. And That'd be the only track I'd put race. Yeah, well, they like, I think it was my wife turned around and she goes, how do you know, like, what's the thing you just got this game? And I said, I know this track like the back of my hand. I'll watch yeah, it here uh, on the Dad TV. And I, Dad and I on Forza 5, um, we set up a V8, um, a V8 Commodore on Forza 5 to go specifically for that track. Like, posting fast as times just for that track and made our own um, setup that we uploaded to the cloud. And it got like, like 500 plus um, downloads within the first week. Oh, sick. Nice. We should be we should be hoping too. Everyone's listening to this just before the the start of Bathurst this week too. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that'll be kicking off uh, on Sunday or today if you're listening today. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um... Move on to uh, what are we up to? Dying light. Yeah, trial mode. We are up to dying light. So. We, we being Sean and I, had the chance to have a chat with one of the developers for Dying Light. What's his name, Sean? Red Oswald, my Jake, Matt McKay, McKay, maybe. I I see. Look, he, he I think he's Polish. And he has a very strong accent, so it was very hard for him to explain to us how to say his name. From what I can get it, I think it's uh, Radislav. Masiak. That's probably completely wrong, but that's the <laughs> best that I can pronounce it. Sean, can you pronounce it? Uh, yeah, Radisla. Uh, yeah, Masiak, I think. Yeah, look, we're, we'll have it written down in the show notes, but um, 
I'm gonna... we, we, we apologise what, <laughs> with what your name is if you you are listening. And um, yeah. we're sorry, absolutely. We, we're, we're only displaying Aaron's ignorance anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we we were fortunate enough to be uh, given uh, a few moments of his time. We were uh, able to ask him a few questions one on one. So it was just Sean and I having a chat with him. And, uh, and recorded it, and I think he held his own. I think he was really good at it. Um, and he said that uh, afterwards that it was his, his first uh, interview. And, yes. Uh, so that was, uh, that was good of him to have a chat, and he did really well. But look, I, what we'll do. Sorry, Sean. I think it was actually just before it. He turned around and goes, I've never done this before. And I said, don't worry, neither have we. So <laughs> we'll, just, <laughs> we'll just go with it. Yeah, I think that, yeah, it probably was. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll have a listen to uh, the questions and the answers that he gives for Dying Light, and then we'll have a chat about that once. Have a listen. All right, so uh, your role with uh, the de- development for Dying Light, what's that again? Uh, it's a QA tester. Um, I'm responsible for QLT of our game. Yep. Uh, and especially for DLC, for Be The Zombie uh, mode, a uh, special PvP mode uh, for uh, co-op and for single player. Right, okay. So is that Be The Zombie mode, is that going to be an additional DLC, is it? Uh, it is a special DLC for uh, people who buy uh, pre-orders. Right, yep. Yeah, it will be in pre-order. So that's not for everybody? In, no, it's not. Is that for, like it's a, a free edition or some? Uh, it's, if you buy pre-order, yep. uh, you, you'll get a uh, bit of zombie mode. Yep. Uh, but you, you can you can invade the other people's games. Yep. Uh, so you get an option, uh, you get a lobby, where you, can, where you see uh, every open game. Uh, you just... When, when, when night when when night comes, yep. uh, you can jump straight to the games and fight with them. Uh, it might be co-op game, it might be single player game. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, there are special prizes for winning uh, that match uh, for humans and also for zombie. You can develop your character, your counter. Uh, you can develop uh, it in few ways. Uh, like in, in sneaky way and uh, more fighting way, yeah. So you, you've got the choice. Yes, it is. So with, if you don't get the, the pre-order bonus, is that something you can purchase separate later on? Uh, oh, I, I don't know, probably not, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, now, another thing to, with the, the technical side of things, everybody's sort of been up in arms with... Uh, 1080p and 60 frames per second. Do you know what the specs are going to be like for that, the final product? Uh, the specs are not yet ready. Yep. Uh, we still work uh, on the performance of our game. Uh, we'll try our best to make it look amazing for all the platforms, for PC, for PS4, Xbox One, PS3 and Xbox 360. We don't want to make two different games. So it's really hard task, but uh, we're trying our best, you know. Okay. As for the, the release date, that's in January, is that? Yes, in January, it's 28 January in Australia, 26 uh, in the USA, and probably 29 in Europe. Right, okay. And is there any hints that that possibly, uh, like that will be met, or is, is there any inside of information that might be delayed? Uh, it might be delayed. No, it was delayed. Uh, we had a release date for for this year. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. You know, there, there, there are still a uh, few uh, few things to, to polish, and and uh, yeah. we, we don't 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 want don't, don't know, sorry. You're right. Uh, we don't know to want to delay it more, uh, so we just we just work like uh, like a madman. Yeah, uh, fair enough. All good. You had some questions, Sean. Uh, so the game world, whereabouts are you actually set? Like, what country are you in when you're, you're playing the game? Uh, so, uh, what country we buy? To... Is Dying Light setting? Uh, Dying Light setting. Uh, Dying Light is set in fictional uh, city of Haran. Okay. It's like uh, middle middle south, uh, middle east, middle east yeah. Uh, yeah, middle east, uh, and yeah. a little bit middle east, a little bit Europe city uh, that's uh, mixed culture in it, you know. Uh, yeah, that was one thing I noticed was uh, the very multicultural looking zombies in it. So there's, there's a lot of different yes, different types is. of zombies and all that kind of stuff. Um, how many hours gameplay do you reckon? Uh, so the uh, we are aiming uh, in like 40 hours of whole game gameplay. 
the main story uh, can be passed uh, in like uh, 12 to 14 hours. Uh, yeah, I did it uh, in 11 hours, but I just skipped uh, all the cinematics, all dialogues, and uh, other, other things. Yeah, awesome. No, that's good. We're really looking forward to it coming out. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk. Yeah, appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Ta. Have a good day. I've got so many good things to say about Dying Light, but. I, I hate the idea that that be the zombie mode is a pre-order bonus. Yeah, I don't. I don't pre-order games. I don't like pre-ordering games, but I have to if I want that mode. Yeah. Do you want the mode? Well, yeah, because I yeah. want. I want to try it, and it sounds like it'd be pretty cool to troll your mates. But, uh, and and it's it's he didn't clarify a hundred percent, but it sounds like you're not even going to be able to buy it later. Uh, I. My whole view on this is that I really don't like it, but it is a way of me getting to wanting to pre-order the game, whether it is a pre-order just through like an exclusive pre-order to a certain company to get you to, to buy it through them or not, but I don't know. But I really like the idea of it being just a timed pre-order bonus. Yeah. But... So, you know, give it to them for a month. Yeah, that, that that's cool. But... It's going to take it away. It's going to take so much away from the gameplay, like with not being able to do it. You know, it's it's just. But what what he did? He didn't really answer my question. It might have been the language barrier there. Where I've asked, like, is it a free edition thing to the pre order? Like, is it going to be pre order the standard edition and get this code, or is it going to be pre order the special edition and get this code? Like, is am I going to have to pay more? to get this mm. mode. That's what I want to know because me, my general uh, way of going is I go on day one on release date and I buy the, the standard edition. Yeah. It is a very rare occasion that I buy a special edition and a very rare occasion again that I pre-order a game. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that, that, so that there's put me off a not bit. even the need anymore for the actual pre-order of the game. I think it's just so that they know roughly what the interest is in the yeah. game. Yeah. But yeah. in the end, like I've never been into a shop where I've wanted to buy a game and I've walked in there and it hasn't been there. Yeah, they, they, they ship enough co copies these oh, days. You don't it's shop enough in Bernie then. Tasmania. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's... And NHL's been out for two weeks. I know I'm going slightly off the beaten path. But it's not an EB yet. Oh. What? It's, yeah, a, no. it's sold out or just hasn't got there yet? Hasn't got there yet. They were going to notify me when it got in, and I now sub subsequently have lost interest. Oh, wow. That sounds good. <laughs> the truck's been raided. But, well, uh, done. Yeah. Uh, Jason, did you play Dying Light this time around? Uh, yeah, I did give it a little bit of a go, but um, I sort of got shuffled off rather quickly because they had a big lineup. Yeah. Did you play it last year? You did, didn't you? Nah, no, last year I didn't. Oh, you, didn't? you guys played that and I missed out because I, I didn't get the shirt and all that sort of stuff. So. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, I, I don't know about you, Sean. Did you notice any different from last year's playable demo to this year's? Uh, yes, I did. What did you notice? Uh, the parkour move seemed a lot more fluid. It seemed a lot uh, better the... Uh, I don't know, the physics of running and jumping and grabbing a hold of things and uh, pulling yourself up and that, it just felt a lot more fluid and flowing this year. Um, it looked a bit nicer. Like last year, it, I don't know if we were playing it on 360s last year and this year it was, um, I think it was on a PC uh, running it. Uh, so it did, it did look a, a little bit better, and we did play it as one of the first games that we, we played in there. So even if it was on console, the frame rate did look pretty good. I, I was impressed with it. Wow. Everything that you've just said then, I'm the mm. complete opposite. Really? 100% complete opposite. I thought that it, it looked fantastic last year, and I felt that this year it didn't look really as impressive. Uh, I think it played exactly the same as it did last year. I felt that the parkour moves and the attacking moves were identical. I didn't notice anything different. Um, 
And last year, I would have uh, an assumption that it was being played on a PC using an Xbox controller uh, because the graphics looked fantastic. And if you remember the Expo last year, next-gen consoles weren't out. Mm -hmm. I thought they had the Xbox there set up in front of us when we were playing it last year. No, they had the controller there on on the on the bench, but no, not the console. Oh, oh okay. no, you know what? Because no, there was I, I there know. was no, there was a three hundred and sixty there, and then we there in the Turtle Beach stand, it was running off a PC with a yeah. controller. Yeah, but look, I, I I didn't really see much different, but at the same time, look, I I don't I don't really want to take too much away from the experiences at that expo because. I think it was run really poorly with the way that they looked after their consoles. So, but mm. at the same time, this game is is one of my highly anticipated games ever since it's been released. Uh, based on the fact, like the day, day and night cycle, I think changes up the gameplay a whole heap with it. If you don't know already, with Dying Light, what it is, um, think of uh, Dead Island, except during the day, the zombies are like your typical zombies. They're docile, stupid. And you can just take them out quite easily. And at night time, they transform into these uh, just crazy lunatic creatures that you will get screwed over with. Oh, and you can, and it's... they've added the the parkour system, like you were talking about, Sean. Where, in addition to the old Dead Island gameplay, you can jump and climb and uh, and do all these acrobatic things as well. Oh. Um, also, in it, it's only certain zombies. I got the feel when we went to the. Um the big presentation it's not all the zombies at night that go crazy it's only certain ones and they've got a a certain um a glow about them when you're looking at them at night and um, they're the ones that will go crazy and when they go crazy then it brings in the other ones that are the same in that area and that's why you're getting mobbed by them with with your normal zombies they do grain aggression they're not going to be as bad as yeah the the big ones there are yep. the the massive ones that will like leap you know buildings and shit to get you rather than the the other sort of docile ones that will they will gain aggressiveness in it in attributes and be yep. more dangerous but yeah there are higher tiers that the, i think those are the ones you probably might not actually see during the daytime they'll probably be in hiding or something like that mm. Well, that's cool. That adds a whole new element of strategy to it if they've got class systems like that. Yeah, and and the I remember last year there was a little bit of like story in it where there was a girl hiding in a in a cupboard, and uh, and the story actually looked really cool when you were like, okay, would you, you can either stick around and try and convince the girl to come with you and risk getting killed because like the lights going down, or you can just ignore her and just go fuck this. I'm getting the safety. Mm. Um, so there's all those sort of look choices involved that, that I'll be I'll be interested to see. But I didn't see anything like that this year. But granted, I didn't play as much this year though. Sounds very co-op orientated as well. He mentioned that there was oh, uh, yeah you could play it co-op uh, if you were playing the game co-op with somebody and Nightfall hit and a zombie jumped into your game in the be the zombie mode. Oh, uh, you could get more points for actually. Um, Killing both the humans as opposed to just killing one of them. Very good. Nice. Yeah, so when um, you got open games, every time we see Sean jump on, my uh, connection's going to be tighter than a fish's arsehole. <laughs> 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 uh, yes. And then so, uh, you, they've also <laughs> added a foot stomp as one of your attributes that you can get. Yeah. So, I, they did mention that like it was something amazing, though, but all the Dead Island games have had that. Yeah, so you can just stop the, the head of the zombie, basically. It just hasn't been cool since American History X. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> that's what I want to see, though. You know, like, how cool would it be if in just instead of doing just the generic foot stomp... If <laughs> there you is a could... generic one. Well, it is. It's just, if you look at all the zombie games, what do you do? You go down on the ground and you just do one foot stomp straight to the face. I want to be able to have them knocked on the ground and drag them to something like to a wall or something like that. Like you could do in um, Splinter Cell Conviction. Drag them towards the wall, like smash their head through a, a basin or put their face on the 
the gutter line and then stomp it or you know, no, like you all these like really brutal ways of killing a zombie into it. You are a six awesome. buck and I like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be would be really cool. All right, uh, anything else? Uh, Jason, you got you didn't play it. You don't really have anything to add, do you? No, I don't really have anything to add to that. All right. Cool. I um, just want to go into more about where it's set. So it's set in a city called Koran, uh, in the Middle Har- East. Haran or Koran? Har- I got Haran. Oh, yeah, I got Haran. Haran. I think you're uh, mixing together Karat and Haran. Yeah. Koran. Mm-hmm. And isn't that a book? Yeah, I was just about to say I what we so. were reading for the podcast. I thought it was called <laughs> Koran. Well, it could be the Quran with some of the zombies that they got in it. Um, <laughs> That's why you want to catch them. I've so. um, actually come up with exactly why they've done this. So um, I want to ask you guys, is it racist or not to have them with headscarves in the game? No. No. No? Thank no. you. And I came up with a reason as to why they've actually got headscarves. Oh, here we go. Because, this uh, might be racist, though. No, no, it's not. It's a it's a perfectly logical reason for it, and that's because hair is a bitch to animate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, look, I, I don't, I don't think so. Like, I mean, if everybody else is going to be represented in games, like, why would? Uh, I almost think that, and, and not having a dig, but if anybody asks that question, that question itself is is racist. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, if if anybody's up in arms about it, they need to have a good good hard look at themselves. As soon as you imply prejudice, you are being prejudiced. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's it. You're the one that you know. There's that. going to be a problem with it though. Well, so, no one said anything yet. Will it pl- pass classification? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll go, ah. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get extra points for killing those ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, those sounds like you're singling out a minority like zombies. Because <laughs> 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 we all know they're not minorities. <laughs> We're going into a dark place again. Let's move on to a different game now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about we move on to, say, Alien Isolation? Yes. All right, let's do that. That was the first game we um, had a look at. Didn't play it. wasn't playable at the expo. But Sean and I, we went straight in as we were uh, uh, on our own mm. and had a quick gander at Alien Isolation. Yeah, but we that's because we, there was a nice man at the front door of the dark room that coaxed us in. Didn't he? That's exactly <laughs> how it was. Mm. Come, come with me if you want to live. Yes. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't weird. He didn't have candy, so it was <laughs> damn perfectly all right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we went and uh, sat in and watched some dude play who was very bad at the game, mind you. Some guy was playing, I think it was being played on PC. He was playing the survival mode. Yep. And I don't think he ever got past, like, the second room. No, he didn't get any of the um, actual uh, objectives done, I don't think. He did nothing. He failed miserably. Either this game is just super, super hard on survival mode, or that guy was just plucked off the street and just goes, "Hey, bro, come in here and grab a, <laughs> grab a controller and have a crack. See how you go." Uh, mm. the, I reckon the game is just super, super scru- like screwed in that um, game mode because when I went in there with Dad, he couldn't get out of the room the first couple of times. Like he had trouble getting out of the first room. Just because the alien kept coming back in through the vents and stuff like that, and then the second, like the time that he did get progress, the alien kept circulate, like circulating that one room in the vent through a um, through the vents to another spot, pop down and circle a room, and then come back. And he couldn't do anything because it got him stuck in there because it was doing a repeated um, action. Uh. And then he finally managed to time it right so he could get past it, and then it changed where it went into another vent that was right next to where he was hiding. But <laughs> but the alien had its back to him and then went back up into the vent. And I was like, okay, sh- what's going on here? And then he finally got to the um to the generator, which is in just the door over. And because the alien was already in that area, he started the generator and it found him straight away. Like, because it makes so much noise, he couldn't get out of the room. Yeah. That the generator was in. It was retarded. 
It's yeah, it seems like a very hard. Well, but that's the story, the survival mode. I mean, that's obviously yeah. going to be hard. Fair enough, but I haven't, I haven't really delved into that. But yeah, it just it it looked amazing and it sounded well. Mind you, they had an awesome sound system in there. But oh, that uh, that uh, alien, the footsteps were so intimidating. Oh. Yeah, they really were big, loud thumping noises. Yeah, it's like the T Rex in general, Jurassic Park. But, um, yeah, we didn't get to play it, but, I mean, uh, it came out yesterday as as we record today on Thursday the 9th of October. I picked it up today and I had a, a bit of a, a go at it. I've played probably an hour and a half, two hours of the, the campaign. And I've managed to see the, the alien once. And I've died about three or four times at the hands of humans and those uh, synthetics, they call them, the robots. Yeah. I haven't actually been killed by the the alien yet. The alien has only appeared in my game so far in cutscenes. Yeah, apparently in the campaign, um, I did look up a bit of this, that the alien isn't as aggressive until the later stages of the game. Oh, I dare say it's going to ramp up big time, and I'm cringing at the thought of playing it further but i really want to push forward but i've only had a little bit of a hands-on with it but it's Mm. at the moment i like it better than outlast because it feels like it's got a better structure yeah it's it's you know i there are it's paving the way so i know where i've got to go without things being highlighted for me there's no there's no um Actually, for the first hour, I didn't. I didn't actually have the the motion sensor. Yeah. Now, the, the motion sensor does have an objective sort of arrow and gives you a rough idea of which way you got to go. But yeah, for yeah. the first part of the game, it's just yeah, go sort it out. <laughs> Figure it out yourself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it feels it feels like a movie. It's going going quite well. Oh, I like how they set it back to what um, the Alien movie did look like, like what the 1980s or whatever view of what the future would look like. Yeah, that's because all the computers are all like the old tube screen monitors and stuff. Yeah, and you've got like old cassettes laying around and guitars and stuff. Yeah, and actually the loading, you know, when when a game auto-loads or whatever, it's a a cassette tape. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mm. So, you just want to give the people a um, just a quick rundown of what the actual uh, game is about. Uh, Alien Isolation is basically you play Amanda Ripley, who's the daughter of Ellen Ripley, who was from the original Alien, well, the original Alien trilogy, I guess. Uh, she is basically looking for her mother. The the company, I can't remember what the company's name is. What is it? Uh, is it Leyland Corp yeah, or something? I think it's it. so. Yeah, I so it's wanted it. to say Umbrella. Umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the 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 company comes and and speaks to Amanda Ripley and says, "Look, what we want to do is we think we know where your mother is. We're going to go blah blah blah. Do you, are you interested in coming along?" It grabs her attention. She's like, "All right, I'm in. I want to know what happened to my mum." You then go with them. They head to to um, a space station and board this space station. I can't remember the name of the space station. Yeah, um, it's, it's yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, you board it. Uh, you're supposed to board it with a couple of others, but shit goes um, wrong, and it ends up just being you on board. And yeah, you've you've basically got to make your way through, trying to get communication back with your other ship. And there's an alien on board. Ah, oh, Sevastopol is the station. The pole? Sevastopol. Oh, Sevastopol. I thought you said that's the pole. I'm like, what, what pole no, are you talking Sevastopol. about? Sevastopol. <laughs> right, so Sevastopol that's the station is. that it's on. Yeah, and it's basically you. You've, 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 got, <laughs> you've got no training. You're literally just, I think you might be a... Um, at the very beginning of the game, you see Amanda, she's interrupted while she's welding. So she might be a bit of an engineer. So she might be kind of good with her hands, but she's no military. She's no nothing. Um, she's got no training and things like that. And she hasn't, you know, she doesn't know anything about these aliens. So 
obviously you do because the game's called Alien Isolation, but um, yeah, and the game goes from there and it's got humans, it's got uh, the synthetics, the the droids, if you remember from um, the Alien movies and both good and bad. So uh, one of the taglines when the game loads, it says uh, the alien is not the only thing you should fear or something along those lines. Yeah. And it's right, because, uh, yeah, I've died a few times and not once at the hand of the actual alien yet. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably give a little bit more detail next week's show after I've played it a bit more. Sorry, Sean, was there anything else you wanted to ask about that? Have I covered your question? Um, yeah. So I've just got a couple of little notes from the uh, chat that we had with the bloke that was uh, in there giving the, the little talk on it. So he said there's 15, 20 hours of gameplay for the story, no multiplayer, uh, can't kill the alien, uh, crafting elements in it. So what do you know about that? Oh, the, the crafting part of it is really good. I like how they've done it. Basically, you collect a whole bunch of shit from around the, the ship and you press the circle button, which brings up a, uh, like a, a selection wheel, like uh, GTA Five, I think, does it? Yeah. It, like the weapon selection wheel, but it comes up with the things that you can craft. So then you select what you want. Let's say it's a med kit. Hover over a med kit, then press L1, and yeah. then it brings up the crafting menu. And then you've got what you've got on the left-hand side and then what you require on the right-hand side. So you might have six of it on the left, and it might only need one. So then you fill up that slot with one then it might need another of something else and another of something else. Once you've filled them in from what you've got, you press R, uh, sorry, L1 again, and it makes it. It's, oh, it's nice. very similar to The Last of Us, where you've got to collect the stuff to, to make. The only difference is instead of just clicking on what you want to make and it automatically makes it, you've actually got to select the parts and put them in. So awesome. it takes, takes a little bit longer. Does so the game pause while you're doing this no okay cool like the last of us you've got to hide somewhere yeah, yeah. you've got to get cool. somewhere safe to do it you so far i've been able to make um like a needle which will give you health a smoke bomb a flash bang and i think that's it I think that's all i've been able to make mm. i also found a revolver so there are guns but fuck, fuck all ammo, but... Yeah, and but if you, if you shoot it, the fucking alien comes straight away and eats you. Yeah, I, I dare say <clears> that would be only useful with the humans. Yeah. But I haven't really used it. I shot, I killed a synthetic. I shot that in the head six times. <laughs> and it went... Oh, mind you, I've got to tell you, those synthetics, the creepiest things I've ever fucking seen in a game. They capture oh, what they are like in the movies so good in this game. It yeah, is I, sick. I saw a bit of your your feed this afternoon on Twitch, and yeah. did you see did you see me kill one? I saw you trying to hit one in the head with something. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah, that was when two of them were attacking you at once. Or something. Yeah, now before that, I'd managed to kill one by shooting it in the head a couple of times. Yeah, <clears> it was so cool. And it's, yeah, when you go to hit them with the wrench, if, if you they they grab you, and it's almost like they grab your arm and go. Like they obviously don't, but you're just thinking they're thinking, nah, that's not happening. I'm so much better <laughs> than you. So yeah, it's 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 cool. It's it hasn't been scary yet. It's kind of been a little bit tense, but it's yeah, it hasn't scared the shit out of me yet. Nothing's really happened. I'm still early in the game. Mm, yeah, it's like um, games that makes you mm. want to clench your butt cheeks for a long time, just <laughs> waiting. In for the in the showing that I, they did with when Dad, when I took Dad, get Dad in there, they yep. said, yeah, we're not trying to scare the pants off you. We're trying to make a very tense situation to make the player panic. I haven't really got to that point yet. There might have been a couple of times where I was like, why'd that move? Or, you know, what was that noise? Or you'll be walking somewhere uh, and you'll hear like, boom, 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 like massive foot footsteps. You don't know where it's coming from, and nothing yeah. happens. Nothing happens. It just yeah. goes away. The thing I like about the motion tracker as well is it's a very faulty piece of equipment. Like you, you know which way it's coming from, but you don't know whether it's above you, below you, and sometimes it can show phantom dots as well. 
Yeah, well, it, it did that for me. I think it was a pedestal fan that it picked up. It was picking up. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, there's someone there. But it was a, a pedestal fan. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's neat. It's a neat game so far. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. So uh, just a, a couple of little extra things. And uh, he said there's no uh, multiplayer in it as it wasn't needed and there's no point in tagging it on for the sake of it. So they uh, supplemented that basically with the survival mode. You can post your times online for, for finishing it and all that kind of stuff. So there's that, still that little bit of way to be competitive, uh, but that's not yeah, what it's about. So I've seen some of the top 10 times. The first person is um, 1 minute 30, and then the person after him is DNF, and the person after him is DNF, DNF, DNF. <laughs> So one person's finished it. No, no, I just made that up. I don't, I don't uh, know, but I can imagine that being the case. There's, there's a really hard challenge I noticed with that as well. It says complete this without um, using the motion tracker. I'm just like, are you serious? That's that's your lifeline right there. Yeah, well, when, when we were talking to the guy at the uh, at the booth, we mentioned that like, is that a like a challenge or whatever? And he goes, yeah, uh, good luck. <laughs> I would like to see a video of somebody actually completing that without using that. Oh, there'll be some jerk that can do it. <laughs> uh, and just my last little piece on it was that um, we are talking about the marketing of the game and how it's been out there and a lot of people know about it, but it's not really a big, massively hyped game that's coming out. And... Um, we raised the the issues that everybody had with uh, Colonial Marines and uh, his general consensus on that was that's exactly why we're not making this this big massive thing because it was such overhyped and it was just with the Colonial Marines it was a, a pile of shit that everybody hated and he didn't they well they didn't want that with this they wanted you to um, get a real feel for the game from playing it from talking to other gamers about it and that and in the end it isn't colonial marines it's nothing like colonial marines it's a true survival horror game um and that's what they they're trying to to get it across as they don't want it to be put into the same basket as colonial marines was yeah naturally the sea are going to have their tail between their legs yeah but uh i think they'll they'll do all right with this one all right well, let's uh let's move on to the next game what do we reckon let's uh, well just quickly it won't take too long because it wasn't much to it but the halo master chief edition did, yep. uh jason did you play that yeah i played that what do you think of it uh what i played was the halo 2 multiplayer reboot Yep. And that was awesome. Feels yeah. exactly like the Halo 2 multiplayer was, that memorable Halo 2 multiplayer, just with a reskin. Everything looks much better, but everything controls the same, and the maps are exactly the same. Yeah, that's that's what uh, Sean and I played as well, and uh, might I say, before we go any further, that I owned your ass, Sean. Yeah. Smashed it. <laughs> that's I because no I kept on throwing been. the stupid grenade, because well, that's I was what trying I to aim. I kept trying to aim and I threw the grenade, but it worked to my advantage and I'd kill people with it. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was. It looked fantastic. It played fantastic. And, yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be great. And I've only just started to get into Halo. I've never really liked it in the past. So, um, yeah. that if anything, that'll probably be the first game I'll buy for an Xbox One if I eventually get one. Mm. Yeah. So um, the Halo Master Chief Collection is uh, Halo 1 to 4. It's got 40 campaign missions, 4,000 gamer score. So 1,000 gamer score for each game. It's got uh, over 100 multiplayer maps. Uh, with the Master Chief Collection, you also get access to the Halo 5 Guardians beta. And uh, the other cool thing was that it had a really quick and easy um, switch between the old and new graphics for uh, Halo... Uh, combat evolved and halo 2 so oh yeah yeah it was a, a cool little thing that we saw with it uh you'll also get access to halo nightfall which is the tv series coming out which is set mm. in between halo 4 and halo 5 
Well, apparently with the power of the Xbox One now, as opposed to the Xbox 360, when you do that swap from the old graphics to the new graphics, it's instantaneous now. Yep. Whereas with the old one, when you pressed back or whatever it was, uh, it would have to fade out and then fade back yeah. in. Whereas it doesn't yeah. do that anymore. It's just boom, changes. So that's that's pretty cool. And I mean, it's not a, you're not going to be playing it much in the old one, I would imagine. But it's cool when you get to a point, when you see it and you go, wow, that looks really nice. And you go, I wonder what it looked like before. Boom, and just swap it. That's really cool. Another thing I really liked when I played the Halo 1 when it came out and remade the Anniversary Edition was that you could do it with the cutscenes as well. As long as you went to the old version before the cutscene, oh, yeah. you could see the cutscene in the old version. Hmm. That's cool. All right, well, uh, that's all I really wanted to say on that. There wasn't much more to say because we didn't actually get to play the campaigns, but we'll move on to The Evil Within. Oh, yay. Yeah, this was a big game, a big game that uh, had some some high hopes. Now, for you, Sean, (laughs) what was your opinion? My opinion was that it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and the consoles had been on all day, and it was running at five frames per second. It was shit, wasn't it? Yes, it was <laughs> absolutely it... horrible, and I really don't want to be saying that because it's not going to give a, an accurate perception of the game, but my experience on the day was it was terrible, looking yeah. like that. Yeah. In saying that, though, the concept behind the game, uh, the gameplay in it i only got to kill two zombies but um in it just the the different things that you get to do in it like um they said that you you see a zombie you shoot it in the head half of its head is still on it will still attack you you need to take its head off if there's a little bit of a flappy bit of skin coming out of their neck the zombie is still alive you need to set it on fire the only way to kill it is by setting it on fire. Um, the It was another one that was a lot like, um, oh, how do you say, uh, Outlast. So it is a survival horror. Um, you do have weapons, though, so um, you're not just running away from from monsters, but... How about that arrow drop on the crossbow? What was it using? Like, um... String. Just, uh... <laughs> two teeth for... What do you call that? <laughs> I need, I need a nap. What's that floss <laughs> shit? Is it just floss that stuff you use on your teeth? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what they used on the crossbows. Because <laughs> they, yeah. the, they had the worst arch. I'm like... It's like dropping right in front of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was this, the, the art just looked like a limp penis. Can you upgrade <laughs> the ability to be able to be more effective with that? Oh, you might be able to, but... Well, I reckon you would be. I mean, it is cool, a... Cool thing. It's made by the same guy who made the Resident Evil games, though. So in those games, the, you could upgrade original, your weapons. The original. Yeah, the originals. Yes. yes. Not the, the giraffe pleasure ones. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not the hammer the buttons and wiggle the sticks ones. <laughs> but, like, I what I've seen of it, it looks really good. You're able to use traps that are set up by the enemies against the enemies. You're able to use um, tactics like uh, throw and decoy. Uh, again, like, there's a pile of enemies there that are sort of, like, just piled there. They look like they're dead. You're going to want to burn them because you, you don't know what's going to come out of it. It just looks like they've um, set it up so the way you do you do have to remember to do these things, otherwise it could bite you in the ass. Now, the the most off-putting thing is that the main character looks so much like the guy from <laughs> Murdered Soul Suspect. Murdered Soul Suspect. <laughs> right in focus. <laughs> you think the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Because I've watched. A, I'm I'm actually getting it. Yeah. I've watched a lot, I've watched everything I possibly can about it, and um, it seems really, really cool. That's why I found it disappointing more for you guys that you weren't able to play it at full spec. 
Yeah, look, with the the demo level that we played it was uh, chapter nine in the game. Oh, so, there was a, yeah, so there was a tiny bit of story there as well. I managed to do some brain surgery and uh, see some uh, ghosts talking to them to each other and all that sort of stuff. D- diffused some bombs, uh, killed or a zombie just walk or two. Past as the bomb and go, what the fuck is that? And it blow you up or get <laughs> snared around the ankle and pulled through a fucking meat grinder. No, well, see, yeah. I, I watched. Did you did you not watch the tutorial video before it? Yeah, I did. Did you pay? You mustn't have paid attention to it because that uh, I didn't get hit by those bombs because I was expecting them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tutorials is normally as far as Sean gets in most games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much right. But yeah, look, uh, it's not my top, my kind of game um, because I, I can just feel myself. Same, well, the same reason I wasn't going to buy Isolation is because it's one of those games where I find myself just getting stuck and I have to watch YouTube video after YouTube video to work out how to get through. It kind of ruins it for me, but. Well, in saying that as well, I'll probably buy it anyway, but <laughs> whatever. Look, more importantly, I liked the, the show they put on as well because before playing the demo, they run you through a mini maze, which was kind of what they've got set up in um, Movie World at the moment, where it was like a, you know, like the haunted haunted houses that you go to at Easter shows and fairs. Yeah, yeah. And th- you, you, have, you have Easter in Tasmania, Red? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Did, did Jesus die for you as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bad lag. How long did it take that cut to respawn? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they had uh, had a little um, horror house set up where you would walk through, and, geez, it was creepy. The first room you walk into, they had these, like, dead bodies strung up from the roof, kind of like if you've seen the Evil Within um, trailer on, on – not trailer, but the gameplay video on YouTube – and you at the beginning you're hanging upside down yeah. in the room of the butcher, and it's that room, and there's the the bodies hanging, and I'm thinking, fuck, there's going to be somebody behind these bodies ready to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> and we went through. It was Sean and I, and two other just random blokes that were going through, and they were shitting themselves, and they didn't want to go first. And I thought, what I'll do? Like they're going, no, you go. And I'm like, okay, I'll go first because they whatever's going to happen in there might wait for everybody else to come rather than just scare the first guy because then it's wasted for the rest of them. So I thought if I quickly go around the corner, I might be able to skip this part without being (laughs) um, the subject of like a a shitty pants for the rest of the day. So anyway, I've walked around around and there was this guy and he had a meat cleaver in his hand and he was bent over a bench with the the meat cleaver, kind of like he was in a pose. I'm like, that's a real dude. He's pretending he's a statue like the dead bodies back there. <laughs> so I thought I kept moving to the to the exit and waited at the exit for then Sean and the other two blokes come around. And then before he moved, I've just gone, nope. And I just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Bajo. <laughs> I, I walked off and then I heard him fucking go, Rawr! and all that sort of shit. And I'm like, yep, did the right thing, moved off. Anyway, <laughs> I went around the corner again, and then there's this other big bloke that looks like he's from Silent Hill behind a fence, behind a gate. You remember that guy? Boxhead, yeah. Was that Boxhead, was it? Yeah, that was Boxhead. So he's there, he's got the safe on his head and with the barbed wire and shit, and I'm thinking, oh, he's just there scaring us because he's behind a gate now, it's all good. And as we walk past him, he fucking, the, the gate swings open. It's it's. I thought it was a fence, but it was a gate, and he just swings open and comes after us. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I run out of there with a little bit of poo and wear in my undies. But anyway, it was a good. I only needed to stay in those for another couple of hours, so it was fine. <laughs> but I was really impressed that they put something like that together as well, just just for the the whole show sake. I thought, and those cool. posters that you had made or emailed to you, the way yeah, face yeah. taken in the barbed wire. Yep, yep, that was just before we went in to play the game and it was sort of like a time waster to while we waited for our spot on the on a console. So, um, that was sick. Yeah, that was pretty cool. They're all posted on, on the Facebook page. You come up very rustic, Luke. Oh, didn't I look good? Yeah. <laughs> uh, any questions about it? No, I've probably 
other than what you witnessed there, I've probably seen nearly everything to do with it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. It was nothing to write ham, home about in the gameplay. It, it was like like Sean said, the the actual performance of the the console and the game was pretty bad. But anyway. Else I'm just going to add? put a little uh, disclaimer out there for what we are saying about these games. So we only are getting six minutes probably maximum on yep. these games, and it, is, it isn't it is enough to give a, a proper big like yes or no on the game. But we can comment on gameplay, little gameplay features. Um, Initial reactions initial reaction and stuff like that there there's in no way saying oh shit don't go and buy this game because i really cannot personally give you an honest opinion on whether or not it's going to be good or not all right uh we'll move on to dead island 2 <laughs> stop sean I'll, I'll put that in later if you want. <laughs> Dead Island 2 got a good go of that that game is sick I can't wait for that that is awesome it looked fantastic I love the bright day settings and it's set in Hollywood well was that the sign? no did it say Hollywood? Like, well it's like California somewhere I think yeah. no there was the you know the Hollywood Hills sign oh yeah it yeah. had that um, but did it say Hollywood or is it some fictitious one? I think it said Hollywood yeah, because I think it's actually set in Hollywood. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. But it looked looked cool. It was like really good setting and uh, it was just really fun gameplay. I was just there was no mission, it was just running around bashing shit. Yes. Really good. So it was uh, it was pre alpha this demo that we played. Yeah. Um, as you said it was, it was awesome, sunny, bright. It, was it was a little bit glitchy with like certain things like you could run through certain fences in the game and um just little things like that uh that i noticed um <laughs> shooting the enemies like there was an option uh, you had a gun or you had a a nice um baseball bat and uh shooting the enemies uses used too much ammo basically and it just didn't do anything the best bet was just to run around with the the baseball bat and bludgeon the the zombies to death which was i had a, was a, awesome. a machete ah yes yes i had a machete as well yes yeah that was cool and it's still got all the directional injuries too so if you aim at their arms it'll cut their arms off legs head uh fingers whatever mm-hmm. I don't, actually i don't know if it's fingers but whatever <laughs> but okay. uh it's it's I love Dead Island. There's a lot of people out there that don't like Dead Island, but this is all Dead Island and, and more, and I, I actually love it. And there was a one of those big, massive sort of brute guys, and he was inside a liquor store. And I went in there, and I was, like, wailing on him, and I was getting nowhere. So I went back outside of the liquor store, threw a gas cylinder in there, and shot it and blew him up. It was great. Yep. And uh, Sean and I were in the exact same game. It was all linked up. We we're playing on PC. Yep. And uh, yeah, so the good co op aspect is still in there. And I'd imagine it'd still be drop in, drop out like uh, the originals were. But uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting this. This is yeah, one of my top, if not uh, the top, game that I'm looking forward to getting in the new year. Mm. So one little thing that I noticed about it was that the sound actually attracted the zombies. So yeah. um, there was a, a speaker playing in one of the streets. It looked like a street party was happening, but there was a speaker playing that song and <laughs> yeah. all the zombies were crowding around it. And there was a gas bottle like which was semi-close to the area and it had one zombie around it. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll shoot that one. So I shot that and it had like a decent size explosion or any, uh, around it. But if you actually pick up the gas bottles, he actually turns them on when he throws them. Oh, does he? I didn't know. Yeah. So he actually turns them on when he throws them. So when you throw it, you can actually see like the vapor coming out of it. And when you shoot them, they make a massive explosion. It's like all the gas around there. It's like a huge fireball that that came up as opposed to just shooting a, a gas bottle on the ground. Huh. Awesome. Yeah, so that was one little thing that I, I thought was was really cool. So um, yeah, and by playing it as well, we we actually got access to the beta when that comes out. So, oh, what? Yeah, so we, 
yeah, <laughs> signed up for it. And, um, yeah, but it was actually hidden away quite well at the expo as well. So yeah, it had it was a really down around this little spot. black corner. It was like right next to the lineup for uh, Halo, uh, the Master Chief Collection. So a lot of the people, it looked like it was just an extra line for the, the Halo Master Chief. So a lot of people would have walked around there and gone, uh, fuck that, I'm not lining up for that and didn't notice it was actually the line for for Dead Island because we walked around the back and it was just his door and we're like, where's this game? And there was this girl standing there. She goes, yeah, just open the door. Then you open up the door and there's this room with all the, the PCs in it. It was pretty cool. So yeah. visually a direct contradiction to Riptide. No, look, I mean, uh, are you, is your only point of reference for on the PS3? Yes. The PS3 version looks absolutely shit comparison to the PC. Copy that. Because I played, before the PS3, I played my Dead Island and Dead Island Riptide on PC, and they both look fantastic. But yeah, the PS3 version's pretty poo in comparison. So, yeah, don't don't take anything from that. But, yeah, it's, it looks looks great. I would imagine that the PS4 and, and Xbox One versions will be quite nice. Awesome. I look forward to it too, then. Awesome. All right, uh, we'll move on. Yep. This one, uh, I'll get you to cover this one, Jason, The Witcher 3, because I never actually got to see anything about it. What can you tell us about it? Uh, the Witcher 3, what they displayed in there was pretty much everything that you could see on YouTube, just it was played live. Um, but one thing I have to do say is that game looks amazing on a 4K telly. <laughs> they, were, they were advertising the 4K televisions in there as well, and it was just... I was blown away by how much detail is actually in that game. You watch it on YouTube, you don't notice all the things like that. Like, when you're running around with Gerald, rocks are kicking up at his feet and all that sort of stuff. The things that you miss when you're watching it on a computer or a TV screen. This guy is... is it was really amazing, the phys- physics that they put in it as well. Like, um accurate moving of the grass uh he was running through grass and the grass was moving properly not like games where it just sort of folds over this was actually moving and it just felt like you were in a real living world in that game and they showed one thing off where they were like look at that tree over there in the distance if you think that's really far away wait till you get to the main city it's 40 times that distance i'm just sitting there going that's at least a few k's away, man. <laughs> like the scope of the world and the fact that what you see, you can go to, just makes that game so good. And then the console versions will come out at thirty <laughs> frames per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xbox it'll, it'll One nine hundred and three p. Yeah. yeah, there was a come out with some strange resolution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the another thing, the style of combat is really good as well. Um, I think I have like going from PC to console, they really made the the new menus and stuff really console friendly. Whereas when they re released Assassin uh, the Assassins of Kings, um, in onto console, which was only the 360, I believe, um, yes. they they had. R- really badly ported menus in my opinion because it was coming from a pc version then they later later put it onto the console because people wanted it but um it's really user friendly um you have all your abilities all your like the meditation and all that stuff really available to you it doesn't feel like a task going into this and going into that and then going into all that with a console it looked really fluent and it's the combat, I had nothing had nothing bad to say about that. Um, there was gory aspects to it, like you could slice a guy in half if you used a power attack. Um, you, like, the weird. guy even showed off that if he stuns a guy and then killed the rest of them, he came back to him, used a power attack, and sliced the guy right down the middle. And like you could see guts and stuff coming out and blood splurting out and stuff as well. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> cool. Gotta love a bit of gore. Yeah, I can't yes. wait. I've got, I've got no, I can't get excited about that game. It's probably too big for you. Mm, I don't know. It's just what, what do they reckon? It's, it's a, it's a hundred plus hour gameplay. 
Oh yeah, apparently it is a hundred plus hour gameplay, and then um, then so apparently yeah, with with side missions, it's supposed to be a hundred and fifty or hundred and sixty hours. Mm, it's still yeah. going to be a hundred hour story. Yeah, yeah, apparently it's supposed to be that big, just because you travel to where you you want to go. The world is so massive that there is just so much to do in the story, and this. Um, the Witcher 2 and The Witcher 1 had really long stories as well. I I played um, up in the areas of like 50 to 60 hours, and I don't think I ever finished the story of a, of The Witcher 2. Hmm. Yeah, sounds riveting. <laughs> All right. Anything else to say about that? No. Um, not really. Um, they did show a glimpse of the city. and Wait, you the... can't say not really and then say more about it. Yeah, but like, that's the only little bit that they really showed at the end. Was <laughs> this, like a short 5 to 10 second view of what the city looked like and it looked massive. That's pretty much it. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I've given you a hard time. Alright, let's, uh, let's move on to how about Assassin's Creed? Yes. Assassin's Creed Rogue... Sean and I got to play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that was that Assassin's Creed Black Flag we played? Yeah. Oh. Uh, or Rogue? I don't know. Oh, just... uh, it was Black Flag. I think it was the DLC for Black Flag where you play fucking Antarctica or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they added a couple of cool things. We're playing the obviously Rogue. It's on the last gen, but. Uh, Look pretty cool when you smash through the ice in your big ship and all that sort of stuff. But essentially, it was identical to Black Flag. It just obviously will probably have a, a different story. Aww. So I don't think that's going to impress anybody. That actually uh, makes me happy. Yes, it, it made me very, very happy. It means okay. they've worked harder on Unity. Hopefully. Yes. And um, the thing when I was playing it, though, I was very aware that I was playing a last-gen game. Yeah. Mm. And, um, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even finish the allotted time that I had on that game. <laughs> you walked away. I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, it was about quarter past eight in the morning and we only had an hour before all the, the others plebs. came in. So, yeah, the plebs come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... No offense, Jace. Love you still. Like it's still, it's still, it still had all the good aspects, but because you know, and a lot of people haven't, but namely all, all of us on this podcast, we've all moved on, moved on to oh. our, our bigger and better consoles. So yeah. the people that are still sort of um, pairing on with the the three sixties and PS threes, you'll get a good game out of it. But you might get a game that you've already played if you've if you're pretty keen on the Assassin's Creed franchise. Mm. Well, the page and the community will be kept up to date because I will play it. As I said, my son. Oh, I'll definitely play he's, that game. And he's going to buy it, so I don't have to pay for it. I'll expect an eight year old to buy me my PS3 games from now on. Awesome. <laughs> now with Unity. Uh, I never saw anything to do with Unity. There was definitely no gameplay there, but. Uh, Sean? Yeah, well, um, Greg, who came with us, uh, he lined up and, and had a look in it at Unity, and once again, it was just very much like The Witcher 3, as Jason was saying. It was everything you'd, you'd seen on, on YouTube and, and all that kind of stuff. Nothing really special about what they did there, which was I was really disappointed about. I wanted to play this game at the expo, and I was looking forward to playing it at the expo. Yeah. And you know, it's a month out. They had Assassin's Creed Black Flag on PS4 at last year's expo. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Was it on PS3? PS4 wasn't released yet. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't. They still had PS4s there. They might have been playing it on a dev kit or something. But they, they had, had a... dev kits. Yeah. Did they have it playable? No, they it had wasn't that. Playable. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was playable. Where? I, it wasn't... I don't think it was playable because I remember the only time I ever saw it was when at the presentation and then the Q&A with the guys who... There was a um, big guy standing thing. outside of an exhibition painting a big fucking Edward, Edward Kenway thing for the whole of the expo and inside was where I picked up the controller and I was driving a ship. You so were driving a ship. Playable. <laughs> 
Hmm. <laughs> I remember playing Assassin's Creed 3 at the Expo oh, yeah. the year before. Yeah, I remember that. Where they introduced the ships. But I don't remember playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag at the Expo. Might have, yeah. to, might have to refer to our Expo notes from from last year to see, but uh, we'll, um, we'll clarify that a bit later. All right. Uh, anything else before we move on to the next game? Yep. Yep. Yeah, just move on to the next game. <laughs> I sort of... <laughs> I'm pissed off with the parody of 900 frames, uh, 900 frames per second. Now that'd be sick. Oh, that's, no, that's 900p. Yeah, yeah 900 frames. Per frames second. Per second. <laughs> sick. Fuck. That's <laughs> slow motion. Like, that's yeah, slow motion just, right there. <laughs> this reality thing that's like fucking overrated. But nah, just quickly, the news that came out this week about it being 930 frames per second across all. Pissed red off. Yeah, hashtag. Yeah. No parody or whatever. Hashtag no parody. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the shit thing. Because they don't want the arguments, whatever. The arguments is good press for you. The more people are talking about your game, the better. Yep. Yeah. Fucking stupid. Good on you, Ubisoft, you wakers. Unless you're listening and want to give me free shit to play, love your stuff. I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. Fucking sell out. On that note, segueing <laughs> across... Five by four. Segwaying Ooh. straight back, I've got an article up. EB Expo Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag hands on. <gasps> what have you got? You found it in your Dropbox, Luke. <laughs> 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 what have you got? Uh, it was saying that that was Assassin's Creed 4 was playable at last. Oh, I knew year. that. What is it? What do you is mean? it something you just? It was typed an article. Up? An article. No, it's an actual article. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on a notepad document. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I found it here. Uh, it right now. Dated last edited the 8th the of um, October yeah. 2014. Check your content. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. I'll have it. What's this? EB Expo, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, not hands on. This past weekend, EB Expo rocked Sydney, and our team was there to play it all. Well, as much as we could without the game actually being played. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What did you read? <laughs> Troy's impression. The demo so... had be firing cannons from ship to ship, so... with the main target being two forts on the shore to destroy and then board. Assassin's Creed 4 was there, and while it wasn't playable, uh, on the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> on the Wii U. I'm going to post this article Nothing's on the Nothing's playable on the Wii U. <laughs> Except for Mario Kart. Mario Kart is oh, always played on the Wii U. That website, that article's from theonion.com. doesn't count. All right, let's move on. All right, <laughs> Far Cry 4. <laughs> yeah, once again, a bad experience with it, but it was early in the morning. These consoles hadn't been on very long, presumably. Um, and the, the frame rate was, I don't know, it might have been 30, but it felt like it was a bit subpar. Felt like I was playing Far Cry 3. Yeah, it does look almost like that, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It's a new setting. Um, I shot an elephant and it attacked me. (laughs) And then killed me. And I'm like, oh. And the worst thing about it was you had like five minutes on the game. And it took like a minute and a half to reload me to where I was again. Well, what about where it spawned me? Because it it wasn't the campaign, I should say. It was the, um, we were like, Smack bang out the front of one of those forts where, where you've got to just go in and liberate the outpost. things. The outpost, that's the ones. And it spawned me right at these massive front doors, right? And the doors, like these doors are like three, four stories high, kind of like a castle. And I couldn't get in. The doors were locked. I'm thinking, how the fuck do we get into this thing? There was a couple of guys hanging off the, um, the, the what do you call them? The bit at the top, the parapet or whatever. They're up the top anyway, shooting me from down, and I'm shooting them, thinking, how do I get inside to start really mowing some some mofos down? So I had to walk right around the outside of the, like, the wall, the exterior wall, and there was an open door on the other side. (laughs) It was like another set of those massive doors, and it was open. I was thinking, I don't know, what the fuck was was I doing on the other side? But anyway, I went inside, 
pulled out a massive machine gun and started mowing them down. That was pretty cool. It, I, I just these demos, I think, are the really poor choices to put off at, uh, at these expos because, from what I've seen in gameplay videos on YouTube, the game looks brilliant. It looks fantastic. Yeah. The snippets that they're giving us are just so bland and boring and don't show anything off. It's like I would have preferred you to just show me the video again because that gave me a sour taste. But. Um, mm. Well, I was in front of those big doors and I couldn't get in. So I hit it and it exploded. <laughs> well, you punched it. I punched it. Oh. And it just like broke these doors down. I shot it with my machine gun several times and nothing happened. Uh, <laughs> fuck Sean, you just don't right. have the power. Uh, didn't have the power that I had. Hacked. Uh, and what then I... You... um got on top of an elephant and rode the elephant into the the fort and I was shooting people from the top of the elephant. Sean, you were underneath the elephant. That elephant was riding you. Yes. <laughs> it started being that close was really I'd be more worried about being pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to try out the gyrocopter and the, the wingsuit, but I didn't have that opportunity unfortunately. Mm. But I can't wait for that to come out. I'm keen on Far Cry 4. Big yeah, time. It's going to be wicked. Platinum Far Cry 3. So looking forward yeah. to that. I was there. <laughs> yeah, you helped me, didn't you, in the multiplayer or something? Yeah, it was the first time. Co-op, whatever. Oh. Cue, cue oh. the music. Ha. Go. You know we <laughs> belong together. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else on Far Cry 4? There's not much no. to say about it. Yeah, not really. It's just oh, wait, almost it the same game, down. different setting. Yeah, it wasn't really much um, shown. We've all seen it from the three videos. Alright, The Order 1886. Awesome. Remember weeks he brought it up and I was like, that game's shit. Yeah. And, he got, and he got upset. Yeah, he won't let you live it down either. If you go out, turn around and buy it now. And then he sent me that article. Yeah. <laughs> And I watched it, and I'm like, oh, is that what that game is? Yeah, I like that. That's cool. <laughs> I played the, the gameplay demo, like the actual, had a bit of a hands-on experience with it. One of the few games at the expo that I thought was fucking fantastic. It ran well, it looked great, and it played great, and it was sick. That was outstanding for me, The Order 1886. Um very, very strange concept for weapons, the way it is. It's kind of like a steampunk universe. Yeah. But it had a, a bit of a, I don't know, like an Uncharted vibe, would you say, Sean? Yeah, it was um, where I'd take cover and um, shoot. But it was very yeah. heavily animated. Like, the animations were so good. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed with it was as well, like, you'd shoot a... Um, oh, What's it like? It looked like a firework. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you'd, you'd shoot like this firework at them, and then you'd shoot your your other gun, like your machine gun or whatever, at where you'd hit it on the wall, and then it'd explode and catch on fire. And that was the easiest ways of actually I, killing the guys because you'd I actually think... shoot them with a the machine gun like thirty thousand times, and they wouldn't die. No, no. Let me let me just explain to you the type of weapon you were using. I can't remember uh -huh. the exact name of it, but. What it is, is that's the, it's not a machine gun. They're not bullets. You're firing this, uh, like, like this phosphorus sort of shit over them, which creates a cloud over the enemy, and then you shoot the firework, the flare, which ignites it. And ah, kills them. So it's, that's the way it was working. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not a gun. It's, no. Like it's not, that's what I'm saying. They're strange, like Probably weapons. Why they weren't dying when I was yes, shooting them? You can't, you can't <laughs> kill them with that. <laughs> they were capsules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, what I it is. Told me that. Think, you think of it like mag magnesium, but you're putting a cloud around them, and then with the flare, you're igniting it, and it, it sets them on fire and kills them. So you can't actually shoot them with that. You can't. Well, you can, but it does fuck all damage. <laughs> Did you get to see a lichen? No. Oh, oh. 
No, they saved that. It was just a, like human on human. But mm -hmm. uh, my God, it looked amazing though. When you ignite the flame, oh, looks so good. Amazing. So yeah, oh, that's a highly anticipated game. Does anyone got on hand where that when that game comes out? Oh, I'm just sitting here on Google. Hang on a sec. Hmm. But yeah, whenever that game comes out, I'll be absolutely picking that up day one. Twenty. Sorry again. Feb twenty. Feb, Feb twenty. 23. Yeah. Right, sweet as. Looking forward to that. Because it was delayed till then, because it would have been out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. It didn't get delayed. No. Shit happens. All right, uh, we'll move on. Yep. Yes. Slowly getting through these. It's going to be a decent show this week. Uh, the crew. We'll have a quick couple of words on the crew. Sean, what did you? How was your experience with it? Uh, it was awesome. I uh, actually had a go of it with the driving wheel. Mm-hmm. So, I, that was just more of a gimmicky kind of thing. I will play it with the controller when I get it, but I just like the idea of, oh, yeah, I can sit in and have a go on it now like that. Um, it looked good. It was like the the racing features with it where um, with your crew, if you're doing a race, you all need to, like, you've got a certain time to finish it from when the first guy crosses the line. And if you finish it within, like, 20 or 30 seconds of the first guy in your team crossing the line, then you, your whole crew gets extra reputation and points and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the map's massive. It's right around America, isn't it? So, yeah, it's the whole US. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. What I played, as we said, we only did one race on it. Uh, had a, bit, a couple of minutes in in free drive, but... Um, yeah, it was well, good. no, we, it wasn't free drive. We did that one where you've got to chase down the other guy and ram him. Remember we uh, did that one? Yes, we did that one. And, okay, oh, it must have been while you were waiting to, to jump on. I just had a little bit of a free drive around, and while he was setting it up, yeah, he was, yeah. He was setting the, the crew up or something. But, yeah, we did the one where we had to drive around and, and uh, catch the other guy. So, so at the start of the race... All your all your characters drive up in their hot, beautiful sports cars, and they jump out and jump into these mad off-road um, versions of their car. And then, yeah, you've got to chase this guy and sort of ram him and make him crash. And um, I think I got him with uh, with another bloke, and and we won that one. And then we had a race. Did you finish, Sean? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Did you already know that? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> what an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this was a game of um, Walking Dead, Thorncliffe would remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions on the crew? You guys looking forward to that? Red, sure. uh, Jason? No. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the crew. Yes, I, I am, but um, I wish they'd not going to fucking delay it again like they did it today so oh yeah it has now been delayed from november 11 through to december 2nd it will now be releasing so yeah okay. they said that it's uh due to community demand that they want another beta um which you know what if it's going to stop an issue like drive clubs having at the moment then yeah that's good but hurry up and give me a beta key please yeah yeah, I wouldn't mind having a beta key when I can actually play it and have internet this time. But uh, mm. so there we go. I, I, I want a console beta. Yeah. Be yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Forza Horizon Two, another car game. That game looks beautiful. Indeed, it does. Yeah, it's been pretty popular from what I've heard. I haven't heard a bad thing about it. Um, do you have that game yet, Jason? I don't think you do, do you? No, I don't okay. have Forza Horizon. No. But yeah, Forza Horizon 2, I um, had a quick go of it. It looks fantastic and it's it's already out, so there wasn't really much going for it. We actually had a conference with Ben Penrose from Forza Horizon 2. Do you remember that one, Sean? Yeah. We basically... Three, three people asked him a question and that was it. He got the shits and packed up and went home because he, go, he goes... This was uh, paraphrased slightly, but he said, See... This is what happens when you do one of these conferences when your game's already been released. Because <laughs> no one was asking questions. No one gave a shit because we'd all played the game. 
And we just had a half an hour long talk with a guy about Drive Club, and we're kind of like, oh, well, yeah, this guy's probably just going to tell us all the same things he did anyway, but yeah. just on an Xbox version. That's it. But, yeah, it looks good. It, I've heard great things about it, but, I mean, it's a car game for me, I, and I don't have a, an Xbox One, so I haven't been terribly uh, involved in that. Any other? You, you don't care, do you, Red? Sorry, mate. It's not the fact that I don't care. It's just not my cup of tea. Oh, you know, if, it, if it was free, I'd play it for a day and then probably wouldn't play it again. Mate, I, I'm, I'm probably in the same boat with you. So Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say that I don't care because... It's not that no, I, I don't, don't care. Wait, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't care for the genre. I think that's what he said. Anyway, well, let's move on to something you do care about, Bloodborne. Oh, yeah, oh, Rusty Big Musky. I put a post up today asking if anyone wanted to ask any questions. And, of course, our resident guru comes through with one. He wants to know your experiences on Bloodborne, please. Well, oh. Bloodborne, uh, I am not... Actually, what I'll do, I'll throw this over to you, Jason, because you know a little bit about Dark Souls, right? Yeah. Tell us tell us about Dark Souls. And, and the game, Bloodborne? Is exactly the same as Dark Souls, just looks better. That's <laughs> the exact feel as I'm getting from that. That's what I got from that exactly. And when I was talking to the guy after I finished my turn, all he said the exact same things that a guy would say about Dark Souls. It is a very unforgiving game. It is one of the hardest genres to play, and um, there are many ways to take like attack um, enemies and all that sort of stuff, where to take on enemies. And that's exactly how it is in Dark Souls. So what they re- what looks like to me, the animations looked exactly the same. Healing animation, the attack animations, climbing animations. A- every animation looked exactly the same as Dark Souls 2. And I'm just sitting there going, this is Dark Souls 2, but looks so much better. And, I reckon that's like, why they didn't bring a port of Dark Souls 2 across. Oh, uh, yeah. I have no idea, but uh, this game, it got me in wraps. I, I want it. I want it now because I've, I've gotten to that point where I want to get um, another co- I get a copy of Dark Souls 2 on PlayStation just so I can play it on my um, TV without having any lag like you do on a PC because I want to play it on play my PC game on the TV, but it's got that like few second lag with the HDMI cable. But yeah, I, the game almost exactly the same, just looks so much better. Yeah, I, I enjoyed playing it. I picked the guy that has a big massive hammer, which was really uh-huh. cool. Um, and I think the compensating. It, yeah, it was like a massive mallet thing. It was really cool. And yeah. I think I think the didn't the handle come out and turn into a sword or something? Oh uh, yeah, your sword. Once you switched over to the hammer, it like locked into the hammer's um, hilt. And became the handle for the hammer. Yeah, it was, it was a couple of cool things like that. And yeah, the the like the name, name <laughs> suggests, Bloodborne. Man, there is blood. There is plenty of blood. It's really. Did cool. they allude to co-op? Uh, it has been alluded in the past. There was nothing mentioned in the in what we or what I experienced. But yeah, there's 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 going to be co-op, man. I yeah. want them to set it up like Dark Souls co-op, like the exact same setup they've got, the drop-in co-op. Where yeah. you can request somebody to help you. Yeah, I think that's what it's, from the from the video that I've seen on YouTube. That's what it looks like it's going to be. So I'm pretty happy with that. But, uh, I think I've got some Bloodborne footage that I'm going to piece together for a um, uh, over overview video of the expo weekend. That'll hopefully be going up at some stage this weekend. But yeah, no, no Bloodborne looks good. It's not t- typically my type of game, but I'll, I'll give that one a go. I'll entertain that for sure. Yeah, been branching out a little bit in the past. I have. All right. Um, what do we want to go on to next? Shall we have a we'll sort of quickly go through the last few, I think? Metal, yep, Gear, yep. Metal Gear Solid Five. The dog, the, the wolf, the puppy. Uh, oh, that's uh, a cute he's puppy. Forced. Let's send that up into an aeroplane. <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> the on that dog was so good. Yeah. It's just like, 
<laughs> so basically what it is, anything that you want to pick up and take back to the mothership in the game, you connect it to this like balloon thing that takes it up into the sky that gets picked up by an aeroplane. That's bizarre, very bizarre. And then all of a sudden you, he wants a horse. So you radio for a horse and a horse turns up. Yeah. <laughs> then he no longer wants the horse and he sends it back up on that fulcrum thing, whatever you call it. Yeah, the Fulton. Fulton, whatever it's called, I don't know. But uh, that... I, I can't wait for that game. Metal Gear Solid Five looks like a very, very strange game. <laughs> Hideo Kojima, all the way. Yes. He went what into a... a box to change his costume. Yes. <laughs> it's a box. But mm. what... What about the fact that the the character name Quiet is fucking noisy as all shit? Yeah. You see that bitch running at warp speed, making noise like a thousand horses? Yeah. yeah. And the name's Quiet. Maybe that's like when they call people with red hair when they call them blue. Yeah. yeah. Or someone. And the way that she was setting up for her sniper shot. Oh yeah, she was like full she spread like, eagle. Yeah, lying back on the, up against these rocks with the gun in front of her. I'm sitting there going, she's not a sniper. She's just a <laughs> slut with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pre-ordering the game, right? That's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> definitely. The one I thing about this this um, stand there as well is that it was run by some... I don't know, it was, I don't want to be mean and say it. There's some bimbo was running it. She didn't know anything about the game. And all she did was stand up the front going, yeah, it's like it's coming out at this time and it's it's going to be this. But I'm just going to go up the back now and push play on the video. And the video was one of those E3 videos with the commentated play. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's all it was. You know, like I just there was so much at this expo this year. It was nothing compared to last year's expo. Um, mm. I'd say about 50, maybe even 60% of the games weren't actually playable. The games that you wanted to play there to have a good, like, get a hands-on of were only gameplay videos. And yeah, you were I'm lucky if to somebody was actually playing the game. Yeah. yeah I, I really wanted to try The Witcher. I wanted to get a hands-on on that. And I really wanted to um, take a go at Alien Isolation to how the, how I could go with that. Just... Yeah. Mm. It wasn't to be, though. All right, next game. Mortal Kombat X. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, I had hands-on with that. That's really cool. That's a definite for me. Um, it felt a lot like um, Mortal Kombat 9. But yes. it looked so much better. Yeah, everything looked so gory, and they showed off um, two of the um, two of the finishes, and like, and the person was, was like, he, he cut off the face of this guy, and the tongue was sitting there still twitching, <laughs> and the guy sits there and goes, "The difference between last gen and next gen, the tongue still twitches." <laughs> and it's sitting there twitching for like 20 seconds and like, oh my god. <laughs> so, a show of hands in the room, who's going to get it? Jason. Yep. Well, I think Jason's getting it. Sean, are you getting it? Uh, yes, it probably won't be a day one release, but I will end up getting it. What about you, Red? May I'm sitting on the fence with Sean. I'll go I'll go a two for 40 on it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a big call. Bar- bargain bin me up. Bargain bin me up. Yeah. yeah. Either that or I'll just steal Jason's copy when he's bored with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on. Evolve. Uh, Jason, you played Evolve, didn't you? We didn't get a chance because the computers had crashed when we went to play it. Yes, I played the Medic class. Yeah. Which is not my usual thing. I'm usually so put off by healing. But that game, it makes you like whatever role you're playing. Like... My my team had a very good team with their assault class, their engineer class, and I can't remember what the other one was. I think it's Hunter, like Explosive. Tracker. Yeah, that one. There you go. And then um, we, we had really good teamwork, and every single class feels really needed. It's not like one class is super OP. 
it's every class is needed because that one player that's playing the monster has so many abilities, so much health, and so much maneuverability that you really need to work as a team. And I felt that was the first time I ever felt a game like that where I just have to be on point. I have to help my team out instead of just going on and trying to solo everything. So it basically evolved... <laughs> uh, evolved, so it's the four human characters against one... Well, it's still a human character, but playing a, a, as a monster, Dines. right? Yeah. Right. And, like... How does what's how does the how does it evolve? Uh it's it's pretty much evolve is just uh, a, a name gimmick thing saying oh next like the next level of um, co op play and all that sort of stuff. There's no real way that the monster evolves. It sort of has its set abilities and that's it really, as far as I've so, seen. So it doesn't get bigger. Not not that I have noticed. Not that oh. I noticed, but I was constantly um, healing my players. But um, as far as I've seen, I've seen there was like three or four attacks from the monster. There was like a giant flamethrower, which was tearing shreds off my team. Um, there's like a melee. I think you could throw shit as well. Um, but like pretty much all the things you'd expect a monster to have. But I didn't see any major differences. From what I've heard on the game, that it, apparently that he grew extra limbs and shit when he evolved. Uh, we probably took him down fast, too fast or something like that, because we did take him down really fast, because we, we pretty much got one person to sit there and keep shooting at him in an open area, and he kept going to that one guy while we were attacking him. So we sort of figured out a strategy to take him, out, take him down really quick, and he looked pretty new to that sort of game as well, so... We probably beat him before he could start evolving. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, as, as I said, Sean and I didn't get a chance to play with it, unfortunately, but... Uh, and what I saw, it looked pretty good, like the tracker class and all that kind of stuff. You could see, like, footprints in the ground, and uh, there was, like, little things that came up for the tracker class, like um, they could hear birds uh, flying away from a certain area, or there were birds circling up ahead... And that would like signify where the monster was to give you a more of a accurate reading on mm. like actually tracking the monster, so you could show your your teammates where they were. But yeah, it yeah. was really cool trying to find the guy first because yeah, you do have to find the monster first. Yeah, and it was pretty awesome. Like like I said, every character seemed every class seemed like they really needed to be there. If one of the classes weren't there, you'd seem to get really screwed over. Mm. Um, what, right. what do you just when you when you die do you just respawn or what? Uh, when you die, you actually go down and then you have to try and get your teammates to revive you. But um, we never had somebody go down and out, so right. I'm not sure what happens if you actually go all the way out. But it didn't look like there was a timer or anything for like a bleed out timer or anything like that. So, all right, but, yeah. Cool. Is there anything else that you guys want to touch on? On that? No, and just any other games. Oh, okay. Um, I was watching uh, the Lego Batman 3, so they had a big thing there for that with a, a few screens up playing it. And uh, that looks awesome. The, does the look graphics awesome. in it, it just looks amazing. It's really cool. One guy was playing a level that looked similar to Resogun with a bat. Oh, yeah, I saw that with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that looks really cool. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what what this can, can come up with when that comes out. You know um, what I think when I see a new Lego game? Platinum. Sean's getting another platinum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not the only one that's got him in Lego games. You've got more yeah. than I do now. <laughs> Huh? You got more Lego Platinums than I do. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, you've smashed you... out all the Vita ones as well, man. Two on the Vita. a big kid now. <laughs> anyway. Shut up, Jason. How many Platinums have you got? I've got one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good job. Um... But I was the first one. I was the first one out of all of us to get a Platinum, though. Yeah, that's just like a priest saying I was the first one to have sex and they never had sex again. (laughs) (laughs) 
God. That's pretty um, much right there. I've, I've been <laughs> a platinum. Now I'm never platinum again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Project Cars. So I took a play of that. Yeah, yeah that was. What did you, you didn't like it? Shit, yeah. It was. It felt way too much just like Gran Turismo Six. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what it was. But it was the next gen. It looked a little bit prettier. What about yeah, the... playing on a 360 though? The one I was playing on was a 360, and the one that Greg was playing on was a 360 as well. Oh, I didn't like the mm-hmm. controls. I thought the controls were a bit piss weak. Like, they were way off. I don't know if it was that car or the setup. But it was, oh, it's oh, the horrible. setup down there yeah, when they set yes. them all up. Everything's like, oh, we're going to put on all the, the brake helping. and. All no, that. but when I would slightly turn the steering, it would, like, fly off the track. I say somebody had played that before and turned up the sensitivity because they had that yeah, as well. Probably. That's why these are a bad, bad place to, to judge on. But that's all we had, so. Yeah, and um, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. Oh, I played that thoroughly with my dad. I played co mm. with dad. And he's right. a big Tomb Raider fan. And we just couldn't stop playing that. We finished an entire level and we were going to play more because um, there was nobody lining up to play it with us. Like. Yeah. I'll get that game for sure. I really enjoyed um, Guardian of Light, uh, and I'll definitely get Temple of Osiris. It looks exactly the same, which is a good thing. Just, I think, a little bit better graphics. Yeah. And four-player call. Uh, right. Four-player. Yeah, because that's what I thought you said. <laughs> uh, yeah, whereas the original was just the two-player, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I, always reply on, I always rely on call four-play. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, just not like solo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's All right. Not wrong either. Anything else we want to talk about? Uh, no. Uh, that's just pretty much what I. Pretty much I've it. Got. Yeah. All right. Well, before we move on to what's that sound, let's go through. You wanted to do your game of show worst game. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, Sean, what was your game of the show? Uh, I've got two. 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 Uh, but there's, um, <laughs> well, they're both the same. I've, I've picked Dying Light and Dead Island too. Huh. Yeah, fair enough. They are very similar games. Uh, Red, what was your game of show? <laughs> <laughs> Single player, four play. Uh. Awesome, <laughs> awesome choice. Jason, your game of show. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Dead Island too. Oh, that's mine as well. That's three from three, essentially, Red. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 I'd pick Dead Island 2 as well. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, what about worst game of show? Um, Rogue. Rogue. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Just uh, did not do it for me. No, fair enough. Uh, Jason? Yeah, I am. I'm... I'm... Uh, worst game of show. Who? I don't know. Really, there's The Witcher yeah. Three. Is that what you want no. to say? The Witcher no, Three. No, 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 no. That was far from the worst game. The only problem with that was I couldn't play the fucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really didn't have a worst game at show to be honest. All right, The Witcher Three. It is my worst <laughs> game of show was Project Cars. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I, I completely mental blanked everything from Project Cars. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that whole League of Legends pavilion. <laughs> no, like, that doesn't even come on the radar. Fuck that. <laughs> it was a lot... It wasn't as popular as it was last year. Oh, no. yeah, they got, got moved to a smaller area and... Yay! <laughs> It was <laughs> still popular like it was last year with the when the um, worlds were coming on because every every League of Legends fan wanted to watch the worlds. All right, you've said contraband words too many times. Just move on. Uh, did we get everyone's? That's everyone. Sean, what was yours? Yeah. You're rogue. That's right. Rogue. Yeah. Best exhibition. Uh, Bethesda, the evil within. Jason. Yeah, I'd have to say that was pretty much the best exhibition must there. have been pretty good because that was mine as well mm. what about your worst exhibition? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't even mentioned that it was that bad it was wasn't it i think i know Dice, what you're talking about. EA, battlefield, yeah, hardline. battlefield hardline no, battlefield yeah. boardline yeah. <laughs> did you see the photo that i posted red 
There's no. nobody in the freaking area. I posted a photo of um of the Battlefield Hardline stand, and it was just people's like heads sitting at PCs. There was nobody standing around. Nobody gave oh, a shit. They all looked bored as all hell. It was terrible. To, to add insult to injury, um, I asked the person, so have you tried Battlefield Hardline? He's like, oh, I didn't even know we could play that game. I'm simply yeah. going, sitting there with, PS, with like, play, like um, PCs set up and all that stuff and a line, See, and nobody's even played it. <laughs> last year for Battlefield 4, there was lines everywhere and all that, and then everyone played it, and now no one likes it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because they gave away the alpha and it was shit. And yeah. Everyone just went, uh, nah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Shit, different setting. Mm. Bow, bow. All right. Cool. All right. Well, that uh, that pretty much concludes everything for the uh, the EV Expo. Let's do what's that sound for this week? Oh, my voice is getting extremely hoarse. Yeah, All right. No. Last week was supposed <laughs> to be the the that was the Rusky proof one, wasn't it? Yes. Guess yeah, who got it right? Rusky. <laughs> Rusky got it right. This guy's good, man. I keep forgetting that he's roughly my age. So when I throw games at him from my youth, he knows exactly what they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume he's roughly my age anyway. Uh, my apologies. My he's apologies. also really <laughs> handsome, so we'll, we'll put that down as a common. I was going to say my apologies if he's a lot younger. He's just very knowledgeable. Last week was Asteroids. <laughs> so we had an attempt by James Edmondson. He also thought it was... Um, what was that game you thought it was? Space Invaders. Yeah, he thought it was Space Invaders as well. Fortunately, no, it's not. It was Asteroids. Very close, though. No cigar. Great guy. So, uh, good stuff. Let's um, let me bring up this week's sound. Oh, Shalashaska. Why are you here? We thought you were with the Colonel. What the? <laughs> That's it, Jason. Do you know that? Don't answer. But yes or no? Uh, can I hear it again? Oh, just play it again, Sam. There you go, I got him first. Sean, did you hear it? Um, I heard it. I'm just trying to think. Red? Nah, man, I'm, I need to hear it again. All right, I'll play it a little bit louder. Have a listen. Oh, Shalashaska. Why are you here? We thought you were with the Colonel. What the? Right, anybody else know? No, I'm going to say the same thing as Jason after he says it and pretend to say that I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say anything, Jason. We can leave it and discuss it after the show. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now, what everybody, all our listeners are waiting for is how Sean's going to work this one out. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to finish um... the paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why are you here? We thought you were with the Colonel. I can't recognize the voice. So I'm guessing that's nothing. Like, not a... Because he does every male character in gaming today. Yeah, it probably is. What'd you say? Um, Troy Baker, for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, this game's before Troy Baker did anything. There you go. That's enough of a hint, Sean. You should be able to get it from there. <laughs> <laughs> Old game military command and conquer colonel. <laughs> um, corn colonel. <laughs> uh, you fucking are cheating. I got it. <laughs> Damn, sure. You've, you've got, like, the art of deduction down. <laughs> How can I be cheating? <laughs> with the drop with the drop box. Yeah, the drop box, for sure. I, well, I checked I, it earlier, if it wasn't there. All right, I'm going to do it right now. I'm changing the drop box <laughs> location. 
Brandon. Yeah, it's over. It's over. You can tell what I've died. I'm not cheating. I. I want to have your babies. <laughs> He's, he's read up on every book from Sherlock. <laughs> the art of deduction, man. <laughs> the art of deduction. It's fucking amazing. It's some sort of Rain Man action sort of shit there. Anyway. Oh, fuck. I might have to bleep out a few things there. But, uh... yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys think you know what that, uh, that sound is, send us a message to our Facebook page telling us what you think the sound is. And if you're correct, we'll send you across a free game if we have any left. Uh, and uh, on that note, we're finished for this week, so why not take this opportunity to head over to our Facebook page and give the Aussie Gamers Express page a like. Just type in Aussie Gamers Express into the Facebook search and you'll find us, and by liking our page, you'll be helped support what we do for the Aussie Gaming community. While you're at it, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio to search for Aussie Gamers Express. If you tweet your life away on a daily basis, you can also check us out on Twitter at, at AussieGamers12. Come watch our Twitch stream and witness some of the gaming raging sessions by following Aussie Gamers TV at Twitch TV. And if you prefer snail mail, you can send us stuff to PR Box 130, Cranbrook, New South Wales, 2749. That's it. That's the show. That's the extra long show. Mm. All right. Now, I am sitting in an absolute sweat box of a Same. room because... <laughs> I've been in here for two and a half hours without any windows open. I do have my stupid little fan going on my keyboard. <laughs> it's keeping my left hand cool. <laughs> it's, it's keeping my F1 key cool, that's about it. So that's not really doing any any good. I'm going to have to go through all my loot from the weekend. I haven't actually got most of it out of the bags that they came in, but uh, I'll get through to them shortly. But um, let's get out of our... Sweat boxes and go and play some video games. What do you reckon? I'm going to go have dinner first. <laughs> Good idea. Food. All right. Thanks for uh, for listening, everyone. I've been Luke One. I've been Tom Cliff. I've been Reverend Mayor. And I haven't been cheating. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been thoroughly offended. <laughs> Thanks, Red. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> gotcha. See you.